All right. Well, I'm, I'm getting the thumbs up that uh, apparently we are streaming. So I uh, just wanted to say that hello and happy Halloween. I'm currently outside the studio uh, looking around at the uh, Sacramento Media Center. This is where all the Odin makes magic happens, as well as a, a number of other productions. This is a full-blown studio that you can rent out for whatever type of video production you might need to do. But uh, this stream isn't really a, a, a commercial. We just kind of wanted to start it outside and do a little bit of a, of a tour of where I'm at, because I get asked often what I'm doing where I'm at. Well, hopefully, Felicia is going to let me in here pretty quick. Let's see. Is she around? But um, welcome to our live stream. It is Halloween night, or at least it was. Technically, it's November 1st now. Ah, here she is. Hello, hi. For today. <laughs> Good morning. Well, we've got barking, but hello. I'm Odin. Welcome to our live stream tonight. We're trying to do something a little bit different. We're going to walk around the building, show you guys around the building a little bit, and uh, and you actually get to see the Sacramento Media Center, maybe just a little bit. This is the actual production facility that I rent space in in order to produce my show, Odin Makes. And so this is the rest of the building. We've had requests to see the rest of the building or to see the rest of my shop for a long time, so we thought as a Halloween treat, we would do that. This means there's no sound. That means there's no sound. Let me kick it again so you can actually say that. Well, no, that should be that I tried to turn the speaker off is all that was. Hi, we're live and this is great. So that should have just been that there's no speaker. <laughs> but anyway. Sorry. It's all right. Okay, so do you want to show people around? Yeah, let's, let's, let's look around, yes. Okay. So, uh, now of course, we're not next to the streaming device at the moment for all of you. So all of you who are uh, trying to chat away and tell us stuff and, and mention the, we're not there. We'll, we'll be we'll, there in a second. We'll be there in a second. But uh, main lobby, you come in, of course. Hold on. Oh, did I go the wrong way? No, look it, we gotta wash our hands before we enter. Hand sanitizer, safety first. <laughs> safety third. Safety third. We say as we're not wearing masks, but all right. We're the only ones in the building, so. This is true, plus in the dogs. Yes. So we do have hand sanitizer. Clean hands, wear masks, safety third. Yes. But. But. We are, we are good. I have washed my hands recently. Okay, so where do you want to take them first? I'll let you. Uh, you, you seem to have a, a pretty good idea what we want to do first. I guess I'm kind of being a host. I have to lead you, huh? All right. One of the first things we did when we renovated the media center was uh, change out these rooms. This used to be one office, and over here was a secondary office. And I actually tore down the wall between the two here, and, and, and all of us uh, combined managed to put together uh, the, the diner here, because it was me and John and Lindsay, and uh, we just made a nice 50s diner, a nice comfortable place where you could have lunch and you could hang out, and we've had a couple of music videos shot. I'm going to try and do this a little quickly. So we Hi, can, people. We can get going. Hi, people. <laughs> it's us, hey. Oh, and here's this recording studio. Right. Where it's... Where's the... Shiny. Shiny. There's more in there. There's more in there. We have a control room in there as well. So this is also very recently renovated to be... Uh, uh, an audio room, we were able to do, obviously, music out of here. We, we get a lot of uh, bands that are recording their stuff, and we do uh, podcasts out of here. So, And this is an acoustically isolated room. It's not 100% dead silence like those chambers you see everyone else do, but the floor and the walls are separated from the rest of the building, so when the drums are banging away, it doesn't vibrate the rest of the building. Yay, cool spaces! Yay, cool spaces! Bruno, come on, Bruno. get up! Come on. come on, let's follow Bruno. <laughs> You guys gonna lead the way? Toby knows which way we're going. Right. And then what do you want to say about well, this room? Well, this is the green room. So you've a lot of you have probably heard about green rooms before. It's the place that the actors can can hang out when they're not actually on set. Uh, this also doubles as a place for uh, makeup and, and and hair to to get their stuff done. There's a small thing in the corner for wardrobe because we're not that huge of a studio. But we do pack as much as we can and, and utilize the space as best we can with, with what we've got. So we've actually got the green room. Uh, 
during these wonderful COVID times, we've got the monitors and what we'll do is we will mirror what's happening on the set in here. So that way we can minimize the number of people that are on set because that's important, right? You want to keep everything separated because only the actors, when you're do, uh, doing the production right now, only the people that are appearing on camera, the only ones allowed not to wear a mask. Everyone else has to be masked up. So you want to minimize the population on your set. So what's up these stairs? Can we go up there? Uh, do we have a chance? We can go up there. Yeah, we can go up there. We'll Let's do it. Let's set, do it. Set next. So what's upstairs are private offices. Um, I, I have one of the offices up here. Boring offices. Boring offices. Boring offices. Boring offices. The wah sound. There's, there's my office, which looks like every 10-year-old disaster room, so I'm not going to open the door. But over here on the side. Ooh, shiny. Is a case of my stuff. And these are actual Emmys. These are four Emmys that I have won for editing when I was working with the local PBS station here in Sacramento. So I have my uh, my silver play button. I made this little foam 500,000 uh, play button. And I've got four real Emmys. So pretty happy Ooh, with myself. Ooh, shiny. shiny. Toby song. appreciates. <laughs> He wants to see what we're looking at. Right. One more time. Shiny. Shiny. So that's upstairs. Upstairs. You can see the studio from the top of the stairs, sort of. Sort of. Yeah, sort of. Toby, you were such a bulldozer. And this is where the magic happens. This is our main studio A. So when I talk about uh, working in a, in a studio environment, and, and recently on Instagram, I, I put up a picture of us watching The Mandalorian. That was all in here. We watched it on, on that wall off of a projector that's up on the ceiling. But this is, uh, this is the main studio space. And this gets rented out for all sorts of things. We've done a number of music videos in here. We've done uh, all sorts of uh, the California Chamber of Commerce does all their major Zoom meetings from in here now because that's something else that has to be done distance, right? So it's, it's actually pretty busy in here. It's very cool. Okay. I mean, that sound cool with California Chamber of Commerce, but it is actually kind of cool. It's fun, it's fun the things that get set up in here because it's not stuff I would have thought about. Oh, I've seen this room be so many different rooms. You painted the floor in this room. It's I painted this room red <laughs> and then white again and then black. And then black. And then white again. And this is one of two studios we have, but the other studio actually has a hot set in it, so I can't open up the door and show you. But we're uh, telling you it's haunted. Yeah, but, so this is a haunted one, but this is our Studio B. It's a much smaller studio. It's more of a photography studio, but uh, there's still a, a set currently in there, but yeah, we can't touch it, so we're not going in there tonight. This is kind of the back area. Sometimes we joke about this being Studio C because we can't hang up curtains in here, uh, but we've got the, the shop for the facility, so this is separate from my shop. Um, and able to do, you know, shop things. Build stuff. Build stuff. Store stuff. Set walls. Set walls. Wander around. Weird stuff that you randomly need on sets. Yes. And then, and then you come to the Odin Nick studio. So this is actually, this was another workshop that was originally part of the building because uh, this was like a, a metal fabrication shop way back in the day. So this is the facility that I get to rent, and this is my permanent space. And look at we're recording live right now. On Odin makes. I'm short. I can't quite get it. There you go. <laughs> and where are we now? And now we are right in my shop. Here's a, here's a, here is a shot you've never really seen. What I got is my main camera, and then over here we've got a few other cameras. What I have set up is. Uh, I have a number of smaller cameras. These aren't GoPros or another one that has, can I have that? <laughs> <laughs> these actually take a micro four thirds mount. So these are, these actually have lenses. They're not just a GoPro, but I'm able to have all these individual cameras recording so I can do this by myself because I had to set up Odin makes as a channel to be able to be done as a solo show because I can't afford to pay a crew. Hey, what's this room? All right, this room. Thank you for asking. 
this room is where Joe is setting up the uh, next grade gun plot on Instagram. So what he's doing in here is making a space that is climate controlled and dust controlled. So there's an evacuator fan uh, in order to do airbrushing for, for gun, gun plot kits. We're going to set up the 3D printers in here and do other, other painting that we, especially with the winter months coming up, couldn't do outside. So that's, that's what this is. It's an attempt to have some sort of climate and dust control within the shop because it's the shop is just concrete walls. It gets pretty cold. Okay. So. Okay. So do we want to get back and all right, let's go see what people are saying since we're in here. We can switch okay, cameras out of look at we got the loot. Be jelly beans. So you were <laughs> well I wouldn't switch the camera on you. Okay. And the microphone should be should be hot, so the uh, so we're on this camera. My phone should be done, <laughs> at least for the time being. And did that work? Oh, look, we have we have uh, people talking. Did they say hi? For Veterans Day, ma'am, if you can read these comments, she cannot. Um, they can't see the comments while they're on the move, but they will soon. Good. Uh, on the move. That's amazing, Odin. Hey, Odin. Good. So it sounds like. You had audio. Did you hear all that? That's the one thing that we were the only ones in the building, right? Like I was saying, it's us, Bruno, and and, and Toby. So we had no idea, 100%. That that actually worked? That that actually worked and you can actually see it. And what's fun is I went outside first and, and attempted to do it, but we still had the stream as unlisted, so you guys couldn't see it. Uh, when this goes listed, I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> but. We'll see. We got five minutes of Toby and Bruno being cute. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah, so well, there's 20 that. seconds of Toby and Bruno being cute on the... <laughs> Don't you guys love their costumes? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, okay, let's see what people are saying. How do you make this bigger? Right, you want to go, you want to do the pop-out, which is the little dots. And you want to pop-out chat. And there it is. Now, I've also set up a Discord chat for my, my Patreon uh, members, right? My Patreon people. Starius is one of them. He's, he's a, being a moderator in the main chat here. And what I wanted to do was give them a chance to ask questions early as well as ask direct questions that I could easily see outside of all, all the activity that's happening in the chat, uh, which I'm not complaining about. I love the chat, and I love that you guys are, are talking away on it, but I wanted to make sure that the people who are directly supporting me would actually have a, a, a louder voice, if you would. And it's also kind of get a preview. Yeah. Some questions before to start, so I guess know it, so we know what you guys would like to hear. Right. <sighs> trying to... And uh, bar stools. Oh, I get to sit. I hardly ever sit. <laughs> I know, right? Right. Uh, kind of weird. So, one of the things I was hoping to hear was, how was your Halloween? Mine was actually fairly uneventful. <laughs> uh, I, I went home. Uh, I took the Among Us costumes with me and walked around the block with that and saw nobody. Uh, I went and stood at a busy street corner. That, that sounds inappropriate. But it was kind of fun to do when you're in a space suit and it got lots of people honking. But really, that was it. I had no trick-or-treaters, had nobody come down the street, which, which makes sense. But um, it was kind of sad in a way. So uh, that, that was pretty much my Halloween evening. <laughs> Yay for Animal Crossing trick-or-treating. Anyone else doing that? Yes, my wife did that. <laughs> it was fun. It was fun. Yeah, it, it was, was totally fun. fun. Yeah, and doing yeah. it with friends. Right. Uh, she movies. was doing it with the with, uh, younger son because he had just, he had, he's traveling at the moment and couldn't be home. So uh, they were hooked into Animal Crossing and were doing trick or treating on Animal Crossing, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I like that you can still kind of connect. I feel like that game just happened to come in the sweet spot when we needed it. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so let's see what people are saying. They're saying hi. Oh, hello. Oh. Hi. How are you guys doing? Are you guys up? What time is it where you're at? <laughs> right. So it's just past midnight for us, uh, but also I know that as, as the world turns, we're the last ones to get the time. I mean, past us, there's Ocean and, 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 Hawaii. and Hawaii, and there's, there's a few other nice nations that, are, that have, but, but as far as... By the as, time you get to Japan, you're on to the next day. Yeah, pretty so. much. So Let's enjoy the yeah. last few minutes. <laughs> Our exactly. Last double hour, midnight, <laughs> special, blue moon, Halloween 2020. That's the other fun thing. Since we're in the USA, uh, this year the U.S. is deciding to observe daylight savings time tonight. So for us, when it finally hits 2 a.m., it's actually going to be 1 a.m. again. So we're doing a bit of a time warp live stream. It's going to take 120 minutes for us to get to one hour. Double trouble midnight special. There you go. <laughs> yeah, no, I tried that one. 
You do try. I try. I try. Okay. Up late, bud. Good morning, Odin. What up, my guy? Jack Nicholson back again. <laughs> oh, Jack Nicholson's back. Excellent. Got a hiya. Love the costume. Good morning. Good morning. Good hiya, morning, love everyone. Watch, love watching the videos. Love the stream. We have Princess Leia in the house. Yes, yes, we do. you guys like it. Um, very last minute costume. I didn't know what it was going to be till about five minutes before we started. Right. <laughs> we have plenty. We do have quite a few costumes behind us. I'm trying to adjust the... Uh... Yes. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's fine. Uh, we should do slow mo slow mode more often. I think it's better. Slow mode, yes. Yeah, we were debating whether we should do it or not, and you were like, definitely, so... Definitely wanted to do slow mode. When slow mode isn't on, it's because I forget to turn it on. <laughs> we got a nice, a high, and I just realized it's on Google Meet. We're kind of yeah. making things work. Modern problems come need modern solutions. The cameras that I have are, are all, uh, well, the lenses that I have are all very much still cameras and they're very set for the light levels and focus for the spot that the table is. So I can't grab, even though I'm staring at five cameras right now, well, I'm staring at one, but I got five cameras pointed at me. Uh, I can't carry these around easily and show off the building or show off the, my messy shop because it's gonna take way too much fiddling to make them work. So Google Meets was a, was a nice workaround that uh, actually the, the owner of this place, uh, John, has suggested. So uh, dialed into Google Meets to my own laptop, hooking the laptop into the, the switcher, and hey, we got, we got a remote to work. So Follow that? I hope you guys enjoyed the tour. I really do. That was fun. Um, it can happen again. Congratulations on four Emmys. Thank you. Hey, Odin and Felicia. Hi. Oh my goodness, my name is Felicia. Awesome. I like it. Oops, come on. Wait, you're in California? Yes. Yes. Sacramento, California. Sacramento, Media California. Center. Mm -hmm. No longer hiding. Everyone can find us now. Christopher Ort, slow mode is usually on, but sometimes it's hard to tell when so many people are in the chat. Right. Nicole King says, good morning, or says morning. 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 Yes, it's very early morning for Nicole. Um, wait, he can't see our comments because they're in a Zoom meeting. <laughs> Pretty much, but but we're, we're here now. Sorry, I'm late. What did I miss? Nah, tour of the studio, that's all. Actual real Emmys that Odin made for old-fashioned way he earned it yes yes isn't that great that is great uh i didn't know open up the door there is one award up there that i did actually make because i've got the hundred thousand subscriber award from youtube the silver play button but i made myself a foam play button for five hundred thousand uh, uh subscribers which i should probably bring down at some point in the future but uh that's the only award i've actually made for myself all the others i've i've actually earned which is which is fun i'm didn't grow up with a lot of awards. I didn't do a lot of different things that, that you would get awards for. Uh, and also, you know, anyway, so it's really kind of neat that I've, that I've got those in the field that I work in. I'm very happy to have them. I'm very proud, I suppose, but it sounds silly to say I'm proud of me. No, but it, if you can't be proud of yourself, who can you be proud of? Yeah, Bruno. So. All right. <laughs> I know. He looks so dapper in this little suit. Look at the bow tie. Bow tie. Bow tie. <laughs> okay. Okay, so one of the questions, one of the very first questions I got from, uh, from my Discord server, from the patrons, uh, came from Rodimus Prime 316 or, or Nicole. And she was asking, uh, how long did it take to actually make Soul Calibur? Uh, you know, the, my, my wife's puppy, for those of you who don't know. Uh, Soul Calibur right back here behind us from, you know, uh, well, Soul Edge from Soul Calibur, I'm saying it wrong. The sword is Soul Edge from the video game Soul Calibur. And it's my wife's favorite prop. For whatever reason, this demon sword is is her favorite prop out of all the ones that I've made. And she will actually go a little starry-eyed, glassy-eyed. Oh, it's my puppy. She really does. It's she adorable. really does. So the, so the good question is, how long did that take? Most of the props that I make, I'm spending about a week on. Maybe I start a little bit early. Usually I don't. Usually it's just research and, and, and dimensions that I'm starting early. I'll actually do all the construction. All the thinking. All, yeah, I'll, I do the thinking. But I'll do the actual physical, physical construction within a week. Uh, and, and then get it all done and up. So I kind of live in a perpetual con crunch. With this sword, I actually spent probably almost four weeks on 
because all the, the vein work on the side is using uh, EVA foam clay from a couple of different companies. And that takes days to dry and there's no way to speed it up. Not really, I mean, you can blow a fan on it and speed it up a little bit. But what ends up happening is you dry out the outside and the inside's still wet and it... Eh, do you trust it? No, I don't trust it. So you just have to kind of let it do, do its thing. Um, what ended up happening with it is I hung it up outside in, in the high wind for a couple of days, and that really dried it out really nicely, but still, it took a couple of days. So how long? Uh, just sculpting the veins on its own, I listened to the entirety of the audiobook uh, World War Z, which is, I'm not quite sure how many hours that is. About five hours of the audiobook, uh, easily for like, I think, the first half. I think that one's a little longer. But, no, I believe yeah. it. I totally believe it, but I the last audio book I listened to was five hours straight. It was five hours straight. So that was just sculpting the veins, you know, rolling out all the, 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 the clay snakes that go on the side of the sword. Um, and that just continues on with listening to, to other podcasts. You know, when I'm not... We don't have the cameras on. Sometimes I listen to other stuff like, uh, you know, I'll, I listen to Adam Savage a lot um, and, or World War Z. And so, um, you know, I don't listen to that often, but I do. Oh, uh, The Martian is something else I listened to recently as well. well that, that may have been the same project, actually. Um, but but for, for the most part, when the cameras are on, I can't listen to music. I can't listen to copyrighted stuff because I want to catch when something happens and have it be part of the video. And if something neat happens, sound. use natural sounds. And you can't use the natural sounds if copyrighted stuff is running off in the background. So I spent about three weeks off and on on it and did other projects while working on it. Is that a detailed enough answer? Did I wander around too much, Nicole? Anyway, I hope not. A long time. A long time. That's the longest that I've spent on any single prop to this, to this point uh, while working on my show, Odin Mix. I'm glad you guys didn't think it only took, like, how long was that video? Ten minutes? Um, yeah, that one's like 10, 15, 18. How are you guys liking the longer format? I mean, I like it because the revenue is better, and this is how I, like, pay my rent. Uh, <laughs> now, to be honest, the Patreons, they pay my rent for the space. That's how important they are. The Patreons uh, actually pay for the shop, pay for me to be able to be in this building. Uh, but I still need the, the Google AdSense in order to do things like keep the lights on at home and pay the rent at home. And so that's, yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm building stuff. And yeah, that's, that's why there's ads. <laughs> okay, let's see what people are saying. Shout out from Washington State. Awesome. Hello, Washington You've State. You've been giving me ideas since I was in the military. All right. Okay. 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 Yeah, you can't even put gun in the description without YouTube algorithm messing with you. LOL. That's right. Yes, uh, William Shakespeare Props had his uh, Orville, you know, the Orville, the show, the Banana Phaser. I think he called it the Banana Gun, and it got demonetized. Now, if you look at it, it's it's you know it's a high tech foam banana. It doesn't even have a trigger. What he made, and you know, no, and it's not demonetized. It's restricted monetization. What happens is. Uh, it's it's removed from the majority of the available uh, ads that could run around it. You know, for the little print ads that pop up or the the little ads that pop up beforehand. So because it's considered to jump more hoops to jump through. Yeah, more hoops to jump for, through. It's not considered safe for advertising. Yeah, which is great fun to spend a week or two on a video and and have that happen to it. Yay! Yay! People are saying, hey, Odin, hey, Odin and Felicia. Hello, hello. I see the blue barrel, so a lot of stuff's going down to the bottom. Oh, wow, okay. Hello from India. Oh, right, on India. Must be lunchtime. Yeah. Um, hola, hola. Hola. Shout out from Canterbury, Australia. Excellent. And one-sided one earbuds, dot, dot, dot. Is there audio issues? I hope there's not audio issues. We have one audio up there. I, yeah, I only have one. Yeah, we have one microphone running. It it looks like it's got uh, matched stereo output on the program monitor over there. We got greetings from Mexico. Hola, como estas? <laughs> Konnichiwa. I'm assuming they're from... Japan. Yeah, I would assume. Got hello from Texas. Howdy. <laughs> <laughs> hello. Odin, where do we find the Discord link? Odin? Where do you find the Discord link? The Discord link is specifically for my patrons. So if you are a patron and you don't know where to find the Discord link, uh, 
you should automatically be invited because of the level that you're at. There's the Odin Listens level and, um, and uh, the, the Enamel Pin level. And above that, all have access to the, to the Discord. So if uh, you're, you might need to go and look at those rewards levels in order to get, get the link, because I just set this up, so we're really not sure exactly how it works. But it's, it's for the patrons. Uh, hi from South Africa. Hello, South Africa. Okay, there's, okay, here's a good question. Oh, good, we got a question. Yeah, somebody was asking, can rubber paint replace plastic dip for sealing a foam? Well, yeah. Yeah, that should be fine. What, um, I'm not sure, quite sure which rubber paint, but um, Creature Cast is is a, a type of sealant. Uh, there's Flex Bond, which, right, there's Flex Bond. I don't see the label from here. Yeah, I think that's what it is by Roscoe. That's a, that's a fine sealant. Um, you should be able to use a rubber paint. Uh, I, I haven't, uh, aside from sealing actual uh, upholstery foam with, with rubber where I've actually mixed some either ink with the rubber or using straight rubber and then painting it with Pax Paint. But, I'm just kind of imagining rubber cement rubbing off. Well, uh, rubber, yeah, rubber cement might, but I thought you said rubber paint. So I, I, I took that literally as like latex, oh, I, not latex house paint, said, which rubber works. paint, you're right, you're right. Rubber paint replaced plastic dip for sealing a foam. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I was overthinking it. Um, I have used, uh, well, it happens to be the Krylon brand that doesn't matter, but it's it's an acrylic house paint. It comes in quartz from the hardware store. Uh, I've got gloss white. I've seen William Shakespeare use gloss black, and that works just fine. The It's very buried. The The most recent uh, Phase True to, uh, Trooper that I made with, with the Ahsoka uh, face paint on it, that was done up with, with an acrylic house paint. So, yeah, I don't see why a rubber paint wouldn't work. A house paint has latex in it, which is a rubber. Which is a rubber, exactly. So, yeah, so okay. that'd be fine. That one happens to be an acrylic house paint, but, you know, it'll work. Yep. Uh, EVA foam has a very, very fine texture that that paint can grip to, so. Okay. I can go back to this cord really quick. What's the next one I've got here? Uh, another maker question from Jerry Rig Props. He's saying, let's see, can I get that over there a little bit? It'd be kind of kind of tough. Jerry Rig Props is telling me that he's having an issue with seams, which you hit camera for. Um, so he made himself a, a Red Guardian helmet, sent me pictures through Discord, and he's telling me that he's having problems with uh, some of the seams, probably with having them open up goes uh, after he's got it plastic dipped and if my guess is right on on what the issue is with having the seams open up come on how come that's not close all right well I almost know what I'm doing oh I see I'm, I'm on uh... <laughs> there we are yeah like I know what I'm doing um, Plasti dip as a spray has the exact same solvent uh, that contact cement has. So contact cement is 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 thinned with things like xylene or 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 uh, naphtha, right? Um, well, so is plasti dip. If you've got, you can get plasti dip in like a little Pringles can, so you can dip tools into it and put the the vinyl coating like what's on pliers. That's what it was originally made to do. At some point. In, in the past couple of decades, they magically put it into an aerosol can, and that's what we've all been using ever since. Um, the solvent to make that thinner is the same thinner as you'd use with contact cement. And so what happens, plastic dip goes on, it weakens the bond at the very surface, going back to one, it weakens the bond at the very surface of, of your foam project. So when you've got things like a helmet or a piece of armor, we've got two flat sheets of foam and it's been bent and stressed to become this compound curve and you put and you let it dry and it's beautiful and you put a little bit of plastic dip over the top of it the very top of that seam gets weakened by the solvents within plastic dip and can start to open back up again uh it's actually something that took me a while to figure out what was going on and that's only because i've used the chemicals to thin plastic dip for doing a whole different project um all you need to do to get around it is plan ahead slightly because it's still it, barge has still got the same type of solvent right so even even using barge isn't going to be a uh, hundred percent work around this plastic dip issue. Just do um, 
with the acrylic paint, of course, is great. But if you if you paint your seams ever so slightly, it sounds like extra work. But if you're trying to do something that's really smooth and really perfect, you just put a little tiny bit of a barrier over your uh, contact cement seam before you plasti dip it. The seams shouldn't open up. When I was doing the uh, superhero suit for Beyond Geek. It was a PBS show that I made this this real life superhero for. His whole upper body was made out of yoga mats because it needed to be a little denser than EVA foam. Well, that's also stronger. It has even more springy right when uh, tension on it. And the only way that I could keep the uh, and that came completely apart. The only way I could keep that from happening, having a seam problem, is I actually took low temp hot glue, would put a bead of hot glue over the my. I'm losing my words, uh, my contact cement seam. And then I would take the, the backing from a, from a sticker and flatten it out because it's low temp, right? So I could just smash the, the hot glue down flat and then plasti dipped over it and everything just disappeared and everything held together great. Uh, it was a lot of extra work, but it worked. Yeah, but when you really want those seams smooth. Right. Yeah. Thank you for answering my question. I really appreciate it. We got a hello from South Korea. Oh, sweet. Hello, South Korea. And I saw there was a hello from the Philippines. I'm not, I don't know where it was at this point. Right, of course. Hello from Jersey. And hello from Germany. What time is it in Germany? Um, guess, I don't know. In the afternoon 10 on the, in the next morning? day? Oh. No, it's not. I don't okay. think it's afternoon yet. It's probably lunchtime or just before. Probably. Yeah, hello from... South Africa and India. Mm. Okay, hey Odin. I'm still a Patreon, but wasn't automatically in the server. Any advice? I actually think some of the expo scenes on that old, well used Russian look to it. Right. Oh, some like the look. Yeah, sometimes you can emphasize those seams and just give it that weather. Right, give it the weathered look, and, and yeah, which. Exactly. I, I let it go a lot. Depends on the costume. But there's times you, you don't you want it. You just take that extra time and smooth right. it out. Smooth it out. And then yeah. um, oftentimes you go back with uh, Alex Fast Dry. I really like a lot. Uh, I actually get the spackle. It comes in like a yogurt container. Um, it's not easy to find. I had to buy mine from Ace Hardware. Uh, but it's actually a, a, a paste. And it, uh, even more of a chalky paste than like what comes in the tube. And the Alex Fast Dry does exactly that. It dries in a couple of hours as opposed to a uh, quick seal which takes 24 hours and you can sand it because it's oh, you know, that would really it's a spackle. Yeah, and so that really helps a lot. I think that being able to, I don't know, you no, know, it is. it's just the experience of, all right, it's like on sets, we're always trying to smooth the seams between. Yes, always trying to hide the fact that everything's flat, so you gotta hide the seams. You always have to hide, and then when you move the seams, or someone knocks into the seams, or they kick the kickers behind the things, and then all of a right. sudden you have that seam back. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, we live that. So for those of you who don't know, which I imagine most of you do at this point, Felicia and I have worked together for years. Uh, we both worked uh, at Smosh. Uh, I was primarily art director and, and you were a lot of wardrobe. And well, you had I started out as a production assistant, so I did everything. Okay. <laughs> Helped out, ordered lunches, you know, and then I ended up being wardrobe and head of the wardrobe department because it ended up being a department. It started out as a closet, ended right. up being a whole crazy mess of things. So, yes, and then after that, we still were working together because we yep. work out of the media center. On, on multiple different projects because yeah. we're, we both stayed. While Smosh moved out of Sacramento, we stayed. And so as productions come along, um, yeah, so I got a chance to work with each other. Yeah, so that's kind of our background. Right. And that's, so when we talk about people bumping into flats, that's, that's working on, Smosh was another one of those breakneck uh, type of productions where we would, get a script on uh, Tuesday, maybe have a script meeting on Wednesday. Uh, she would immediately start working on, on wardrobe. I had a, a, a job, a, a full-time job as well, so I was could only really work on the weekends. Uh, had a whole other person, uh, Lindsay, that would help out and was more the art director than I was, but I, I don't remember how that worked out. Um, so I would come into the weekends to do a bunch of mad building. She would do, Lindsay would do mad building as well. And we would actually have two scripts. So I'm saying we get a script on Tuesday. We actually get two scripts on Tuesday. And then we'd have to build uh, all the way through until, was it Monday or Tuesday you guys started filming? Well, we'd film two days a week every other week, but right. it was, 
I don't know. It started to get crazy because by the end there, we were doing five days a week. Right. It just was a like madhouse. Three or four, yes. And it started out with like one or two costume changes for one or two people, just Ian and Anthony, to being Ian, Anthony, Keith, Noah, <laughs> Shane, Olivia, Courtney, yeah. and then cast members, set members, and a whole party full of people. And then every scene, they have a new outfit for every... Anyways, uh -huh. it started out small. And it got it crazy. Out of control. <laughs> which was fun. And I think we grew as... <laughs> we probably did, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that was... So it'd be a week of production, then we'd have a week of pre-production again, and then a week of production. And during that production week, they'd make, make anywhere from two to five videos. So... Each video about 18 scenes. <laughs> yeah, each video about 18 scenes. I think there was one particular weekend... Because they, they ended up trying to do a lot where they'd go on location for the sets. Because location... It takes longer for the production to get there, but you have limited space in a studio for building a set and time of resetting a set. I think the most that we were able to cram into the Smosh Studios at once was 17 sets that were all standing at the same time. I remember that. <laughs> oh my... I yeah. remember that. And that included the shining hallway, you know, for, yeah. for so Ian and Anthony could be the, the haunted oh, twins. Yeah. Yep. Felicia and I dressed up as the twins. <laughs> oh, okay. We have a picture of that. Oh, yeah. good. <laughs> Fun times, right? Fun times. But yes, lots and lots of costumes, lots and lots of sets. Let's see what people are saying. We got a hi from Australia. Ah, good. A hello from Los Angeles. A good morning from South Africa. It's 9.30 in the morning. And we got a hi from New Zealand. You all are lucky. Sweet. Hello, New Zealand. The dog looks so cute with the bow tie. Yes, he does. I and I see the Jester442 has figured it out. So hopefully the person who was asking on, on uh, YouTube chat has figured out how to find the Patreon Discord. Excellent. Yes. I used Discord for the very first time today. Yes. I haven't quite figured it out, but I'm trying. <laughs> I use it a little bit. Just a little bit? Just a little bit. That's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm never on the interwebs, so we'll see how this goes. So... Let's see what people are saying. What are they saying over there? Uh, I'm trying to read it. I'm trying to do the one contact thing that works for, for cons. Uh, it doesn't work for trying to read a computer. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, Starius is uh, saying it's really cool to have some imagery to put uh, to put to the spaces that they've heard about. So Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Starius. I'm glad you enjoyed the whirlwind tour. I hope we didn't talk through it too quickly. Yeah. Um, let's see. So here's one that we can both answer. This is coming from da uh, Toothpick19, who's David Theobald III, who's a part of the member of a podcast I'm on all the time, which is Nerd Podcast Radio, or NPR. Um, NPR. Yeah, Nerd Podcast Radio. I like it. So David is, uh, actually I'll be on Nerd Podcast again, how, is it end of November or beginning of December? Coming up soon, I'm going to be on Nerd Podcast. Um, anyway, David is asking a uh, question for me or you. What's the one prop that we've always wanted to make that we haven't gotten around to yet? Is there like one thing that, for you it might, might be more wardrobe, but you, you can, I'm sure it's no, open for interpretation. There's a million things that I want to make and I have on the back of my head, but. Right. There's one that? prop that I want to make that I haven't gotten around to yet. Talk to over you, you can go ahead. No, I know, I'm, yeah, I, I'm just trying to think. I want to modify my ladybug yo-yo, but I don't think that's... I have it, technically, right. but I haven't modified it yet. Fair enough. So, that's just on the list of things that I'm working. <laughs> well, if you're talking about modifications, it's not a prop. Well, something I haven't got around to yet? Yeah, cleaning my shop. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's a huge mess over there where I've got... Trying to, like, store my foam and, and the the... It was never that good to begin with, but it really got upset when we started building the room we showed you earlier for, for Next Grade Gunpla to be able to work out of. And uh, that's still a work in progress, and it's still... I have my choice. I can spend my time building a prop and making a show, or I can work on my shop. I don't usually have a lot of time to do both. Just pull an Adam Savage and just be like, today we're going to organize my corner. <laughs> Hello. Hi, I'm Odin. I'm coming from my cave, and today I'm going to clean my shop, and you get to watch it. <laughs> Maybe. Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> nah. Uh, but more realistically, 
Something I've actually literally literally have put off for two weeks now is uh, Mega Godzilla. I've talked about wanting to do Mega Godzilla since I went to Monterey Comic Con in 2018. Um, was talking to another patron who's not on right now, um, uh, Gary El Elgert Fail. God, love his last name. Um, <laughs> well, that's my mom's maiden. Is well, Fail? Fail. Yeah. Okay, nice. Um, you know, we joked about doing Mecha Godzilla and started collecting stuff for it. My plan was to have a Mecha Godzilla build, kind of like Gundam, and to start doing that the last week of the month. So that means it would have been this last week, uh, video. Well, times being what they are, uh, Among Us was doing so incredibly well, and I was actually selling my pattern on Etsy a lot. I decided I really needed to do an update video on that and, and show some other things that went along with it. Uh, now, next week, you know, the first week of November, was the next plan for, okay, I'll do Mecha Godzilla then. I got a sponsorship with Michaels, so I built the Black Knight from Monty Python and Holy Grail, so this is actually next week's video that I'm going to finish editing tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense? Uh, so, Mecha Godzilla is one that's been, been put off, but I will start working on Mecha Godzilla probably this Monday or Tuesday for the second week of November, especially now that Cyberpunk 2077 has been pushed back. And, um... That's going to actually start happening. Okay, I know which one is the prop that I have on okay. the back burner that I haven't started, but I will really want to work on. Right. It's the Mickey Mouse belt. So, right. I'm making... Has anyone seen the Mickey Mouse watch where it points to the numbers? <laughs> right, because it's classic, just a little watch. Yeah, my aunt had it in the 80s. I was fascinated with that watch. Well, anyways, I found a clock that had the Mickey Mouse on it, right. and I want to turn it into a belt with that hooks like a regular, you know, like a watch around the waist. Mm -hmm. So that's a project that I have that I have all the stuff for. I'm like, there's no reason why I shouldn't have started it. But yeah, it's one of those props that I want to work on. Right. But it's easiest. It's the ones you do for yourself are the easiest ones to just push off. Just saying. Definitely. We joke a lot about getting side quests, which you know, any oh, yeah. gamers are familiar with. You have a goal that you want to do and side quests keep popping up. Like, I, I don't know how many weird things I had pop up this week, partly because it's Halloween, partly because I've, I can make a million excuses. So, I'm not as far along on this as I should be. I should be done with this, but no, I'm still in post-production. Yeah, I think that started out at Smosh because I was costumes, you were props and sets, and every once in a while I'd be like, Odin, I have a side quest, I need help with this costume or prop, you know, where they kind of over... Lab. They seriously overlap because... All the time. You have a handbag, like a messenger bag, okay? The actor wears that, but it's not clothes. So is it a prop or is it wardrobe? What about a hat? Sunglasses? Where do you draw the line? <laughs> yeah, and then also sometimes it's just like, this is a tricky problem. I've been like racking my brain. Can I just talk to you about it? All right, you're going to tell me some great ideas and then I'm just going to go do it my own way. Right, yeah, Or vice exactly. versa. Right, you know? exactly. So it's just every once in a while it was like a side quest. Remember when you helped me get the car? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I had to dress somebody up as a car. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was a correct that was yeah, a crazy that was... side quest overnight, middle. Anyways. Yep. And not one of those like empty seats drive through prank cars. No, that was something required for the script. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh look at that. We actually got a super chat. Wow. Wow. What's the blue bar? I can't read the name from here. 99.99. No, the person's name. Oh, Ronnie Bland? Ronnie Bland? What's that mean? What's that mean? That means Ronnie Bland was nice enough to directly through chat uh, d donate or, or pledge, whichever you want to look at it, 99 cents using the super chat feature. Awesome. Trick or treat. Trick or treat. So <laughs> thank you, Ronnie. Thank you very much. Oh, yay. Somebody's star Stardius is giving him a round of applause. Excellent. So people like you make this thing go. Definitely. Um, Odin, what's this about you winning Emmys? Didn't you know that he used to win Emmys before he started doing this? <laughs> right. Well, for those of you coming in late, I suppose I could wander off and, and leave poor Felicia here to entertain you all by herself. What's this about me winning Emmys? Emmys? I used to work at the local PBS station here in Sacramento, KVIE Channel 6. And during my time there, uh, I managed to win four different Emmy awards for editing because of on-air presentations through uh, KVIE. It was uh, two different documentaries. One was on um, uh, ALS uh, and one was on homelessness. 
And then there was another show that the same show won twice. It was both. It was called Yes, We're Open. It was all about local businesses. It was a magazine format show where you have a host that shows up and says, "Hey, this is what's going on," and you run around and talk to like five different businesses throughout the episode. Uh, one of them followed uh, sun, sun, sun Down to Sun Up. It was the overnight and how different businesses operate different ways as they uh, work through the night. And the other one was just had uh, some fun stories in it. And so, uh, yeah, I've got Emmys. Thank you. Very happy about that. They're so shiny. It was great when uh, I was, I won my first one and I was still working with Smosh and would go back to the set and the director, Ryan Todd, was like, all right, everyone, remember, this is Emmy Award winning Odin <laughs> telling us about that. this. <laughs> I that. That was great, so thank you, Ryan. <laughs> Odin, he's the man. <sighs> so. All right, well, I can see if I can't. Uh... How that Discord is going. How the Discord is going. There's, there's, there's activity, not as much, but there's some activity. Yeah, uh, yeah that's no. I'm loving the things. pictures, by the way. Right. I, I do see them. I know I'm not being a very active participant, ter, an active participant in the chat, but I am peeking, so there's that. This. So we got a hi from Panama. It's about to be 3 a.m. Wow, good morning. Yes. Normally I wake up in about two hours, so. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Let's see what people are saying. So, Rodimus Prime, uh, Nicole again is asking, uh, presumably me, it just says you. Uh, Odin, you make a lot of video game props, um, but do you play video games? Uh, and if so, what console, or are you the imposter, because uh, you're looking kind of sus. <laughs> so I do play that game. So if you ever see, um, well, chances are, if you see an, an orange uh, spaceman running around in Among Us called Odin okay. Makes, it's me. Now, there's a good possibility there's going to be an imposter because it's the whole name of the game. But um, chances are that's me because I do actually play that one. I don't play that many video games. I love the art. I love the cinematics. Um, and, and, I, and I enjoy a lot of the mechanics and a lot of the story with it. Uh, but honestly, I haven't played them as much. What console? I have a PS4. It's kind of an expensive Blu-ray player. Um, and, and what games do I play on it? I play, uh, I have played I Alien Isolation. I haven't turned it on in a year, by the way. But I have played Alien Isolation on it and Lego Dimensions. And those are the, uh, about the only two games I really play on I actually it. actually really like playing those Lego games sometimes. Yeah, the Lego games are great. It's just like you can dive into the story. Right, and I, I love the tongue-in-cheek humor of, of the of the fact that it's 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 like Monty Python and the Holy Grail in a way. It's irreverent irreverent uh, humor. It's, it's making fun of itself, but not in a nasty way, and it's it's enjoyable and fun. Yeah, no. Looks like we have a couple more shout-outs to do here. What have we got? Wow, we got a Ronnie Blend. Ronnie Blend, Blend again? Bland. He got a dollar ninety-nine. A dollar Woo! Ronnie Blend, Blend, thank you. And then we got a Jaden L that did fifty dollars. What? Appreciate appreciation for how much you have inspired me odin i've discovered a new passion for creating and it deepened my connection with my dad so thank you oh that's awesome thank you Jaden. yeah I, uh we were talking to him you know a couple couple so every monday if you guys don't know every monday felicia and i have been streaming live uh starting at noon till two so we're a little off or normal schedule here and we've been working on the witcher costume and i remember talking to Jaden uh about our dads and he has since become a patron. So not only is he supporting me through Patreon, he's now, well, giving us, because, you know, <laughs> let's, let's be real here. Um, thank you. Thank you, Jaden. Brought to you by viewers like you. Odin Makes is brought to you by viewers like you. Oh my gosh, I love the PBS voice. <laughs> <laughs> I can start a rumor and just tell people that you do the PBS voice for PBS. No, you just work for them, but... <laughs> Hello, and thanks for calling Movie Phone. <laughs> That's okay. I worked for the County Office of Education, and I used to have to answer the phone and be like, Hello, thank you for calling... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what it is. Thank so you for calling the Sacramento County Office of Education, California High School Proficiency Exam Office. How may we help you? Right? I like the California High School Proficiency Examination Office. Why? Because they got me my diploma halfway through my junior year, and I was able to get the heck out of, out of high school because that place sucked. I graduated early too, but I ended up just taking double courses. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, no, the, I totally legit. There was a lot of people. I think one of the Jonas Brothers did it when we were there, so he got like special treatment of right. like facilities. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. No, no so you, actually, you actually have to go to the facility to take the test. Yeah. Right? 
Yeah. Or did I go to a high school? No. no. Well, it could have been a test. We had various testing sites okay. to put the booklets together. Right. Yeah. I don't know. I put together people's presentations, color coordinated them. It was sure. fun. You know. Yeah. High probably college time. jobs, right? I remember taking the test in 86. So, but anyway. Um, so, yeah. So, technically, I graduated high school, but I didn't bother to take a senior year. Yeah. Well, the <laughs> that... It's different than the GED because right. the GED is not the equivalent of a high school diploma where that one is. That Anyways, one is. The but more only you know. within the state of California, to my understanding. Yeah. Yeah. But does no one else cares. <laughs> we sent it all over the United yeah. States, so transcripts at least. Um, let's see what people are saying. Yes, please. How was your day today, both of you? Mine was pretty good. It was stressful. Uh, I tried to get uh, stuff done on, on the video. Basically, I had to finish painting the helmet this morning. And then I had two different major side quests come along. Uh, the, the, the hot set that we couldn't show you. There's a major prop that I had built for, for that fellow. His name's Gonzo. Um, I had to get the big car off the wall. There's, a, there's this like kind of a mock-up of the Mach 5 from Speed Racer. It's that style. It doesn't look like the Mach 5 at all. It's a big foam car. It's a big foam prop car. It's a big foam prop car. And it's just the hoods. That we, I used on a vi that Uh, Vicky T. Yeah, that was one of the videos I was doing. Yeah. Yeah. I have it on my Instagram, by there the way. The, the car. But. The car might be on my Instagram, too. Yeah, anyway, anyways. I had to pull, pull that off the wall so we could shoot with it. So that was the first, like, major side quest. And then, um... It's a pain in the ass to get it from up on top of the ceiling down. Just... I know, it sounds weird, but it is. And I've spent a few hours today trying to make sure that this Google Meet and, and Discord thing was actually going to work. <laughs> because, you know, why Technology. not wait till the day of before you actually try it? Actually, I'm waiting for the laptop to come back. But, um, yeah, so d did that testing. That was, and then, you know, pretended like Halloween happened. <laughs> How about yes. you? Well, I had a fun day. I'm not going to lie. Good. Lots of, I made... Tavern style pot roast, I don't know, with all the candy I've been eating mm. and watching some good TV. Like I said, trick or treating on Animal Crossing. Um, got some in, no, Chick fil A earlier. I, we were going to get in and out, but they were next to each other. And sure. Went for chicken. I don't know. Okay. But I had cold pizza. Cold pizza? Yep. <laughs> that was lunch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I've been stuffing my face with candy all day. I can't complain. Genuinely can't. Had a good time. Dressed the dogs up. They're adorable. They're adorable. Aren't they? They are adorable. Yes. I was going to say adorable, but no, they're just straight adorable. They are. Toby's a tarantula, and Bruno's a little magician, but he has a little bow tie, so it's adorable. He has a furry. He had a magic wand, but Toby ruined it. So, did you guys go all out Sweet decorating time. for Halloween? No. Aww. No, I added a garland. <laughs> right. Well, a little bit for the set here. This is the majority of the decorations that, that I participated in. What we did at home was nothing. <laughs> we, we hauled uh, a, a couple of chairs out to the sidewalk with, with the old school plastic, you know, trick-or-treat pumpkins that we, we put our, our treats in to mm -hmm. give out and, and didn't see one person. Yeah, normally I go all out, but you know what? This is 2020 and we're doing this. We're doing this. Thank you guys for coming. Yes. Okay, let's see. Eat all the Halloween candy. Yes. Oh, yeah, it'll happen. I just haven't touched it because I don't want to eat on camera. <laughs> Look at this. The jelly beans. I went and got, like, purchased it this year. Um, are you going to add the updates to the Among Us patterns on Etsy? I thought you did. Did you? I, I did. Um, I need to really consolidate it. It's not really very fair the way it is right now. It's kind of a mess, a lot like my shop, because it's been a hodgepodge of putting it together. Yeah, so yes and yeah. no. Yeah. It's, it's kind of there, but working on it, it'll get better. And if you already bought it, you'll get a better. Right. Yeah. If, if, you, if you already bought it, and then there's... I, I actually put this in, 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 the, in the pattern itself to go ahead and ask me questions. And I've had a number of people uh, ask me questions about how the pattern works, or, like, I put out a version 2 of the pattern, but I left off the, the backpack because it's a square. 25 inches square. Do you need a pattern for that? Um, and so I was I was answering a lot of those questions because, well, they kind of need a pattern because if it isn't spelled out, you really can't guess it's a 25-inch square. Yeah. 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 I'm squeaking. Um, <laughs> what's the hardest product you've built so far? That's always a great question. Um, the hardest prop that I built so far, well, the Soul, Soul Edge took a long time, but I wouldn't say it was the hardest. Uh, the Gravity Gun, which 
it's over my head, but you can't see it. Uh, so Half-Life 2, the gravity gun, I, I built that about a year ago. That was also hard, but I think the things that get me the most is trying to do... Um, those are... Okay, so the gravity gun's an industrial type of a, of a look, right? It's got a lot of hard edges, a lot of, a, a lot of right angles, a, a lot of bits that get glued to it, and then it's really dirtied up. And I love that type of work because... You can hide your mistakes, or at least I think I can. You just add more to it, and it starts to look better. And as long as you've got the general shape, you can get the rest of it okay. What's hard is War Machine is hard. Uh, the, the actual head of the Gundam is hard because it is a final, smooth shape with no real texture, no real seams. And if you don't have the shape right to begin with, you're hosed. You can't recover from it. Not, not at least... Self-critical Odin can't recover from it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The ones that the I find that sometimes the simplest projects are the most complicated. Yeah. Like men's fashions. I'm just saying a men's dress shirt is so simply complicated. Like a tie is simply complicated. Yep. You wouldn't realize how simple and how complicated things get. Like a tie, if it's not on a perfect bias, it'll twist. Who knew? I didn't think about the fact that ties are cut on a bias. That makes sense. And it sense. has to be perfect, otherwise... It It'll twist. twist, because it's going to be stronger in one direction than the other. Men's dress shirts have to be buttons on the correct side. Otherwise, I've seen guys just try, <laughs> like, stand there for about five minutes at a costume shop. I, We often, guys, would the first time they ever put on a women's shirt would be at the costume shop, and they just stand there going, fi couldn't figure out how to button a shirt. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. It's just... Because I think Simply my first Beetlejuice costume was a woman's blazer. Yeah. And so, yeah. Yeah, it just, the simple complicated, you know, the less texture, the less seams, the less you have to hide. Yeah, the less, the less texture there is to hide, or all you can see is the shape, those are the, those are the really hard props. And that's why I haven't done Iron Man's helmet yet. And they catch you off guard because sometimes you go, no, that should be really simple. I could do that. No. no. And then sometimes it's not. But I'm just saying. And then a good mix of the two is like my Bumblebee helmet. I am, I can almost reach it. Uh, the Bumblebee, Bumblebee helmet I did, this is like one or two years ago when the movie came out. I love the back of the head, right? I love the back of the head and the antenna, especially back here. This all looks great. The face, the, the proportions are wrong. Uh, he's squished in and elongated. So it's not Bumblebee's face. All the right pieces are there but they're not in the right ratios to each other, and I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you just look at something and... Mm. Yeah. So who's, yeah. who's, who's, who's got so the, the have, teal bar there? Jerry Rig Props, he did $5, and he says, I got to split. Baby's awake, and he needs changing and feeding. I'll rewatch the rest another time. Later, Excellent. guys. Have fun. He's probably gone at this point, but later, Jerry. Thank you very much. Uh, again, one of my patrons, and giving additionally, that's... Guys, thank you. Yes, and sweet little baby. Sweet little baby. Sweet dreams. No, what's nice is he's always trying to watch, but you know he's he's but he's UK, so it's good morning. It's good morning. it's oatmeal time for him. Nice. Or actually, past at this point. Hey, happy hello. Oh wait, we have another five dollars. Yeah. Sorry, I couldn't donate more when contact oh. cement goes grainy. Does that mean it goes? It's going off. And is there anything I can do? And that's GPS. Stevens or GP Stevens. GP Stevens. Okay, one. Thank you, GP Stevens. Um, I didn't think about the fact that I, I'm not asking you guys to bribe me into answering your questions. No, I'm just that, that's not it. So you're asking about uh, contact cement going grainy. Uh, it happens. Um, yeah. It definitely happens because you. I like to buy contact cement in larger quantities because it becomes cheaper. I can get a gallon for thirty five dollars versus buying a pint for eight, right? Um, so that the end result is it dries out. Uh, in the squirt bottles, it dries out. In in the uh, in in the glue pot that I like to use a lot, it isn't a, a a solid seal, so it does slowly over time dry out. Uh, rubber, not rubber cement uh, thinner. Barge makes contact cement thinner. You can just pour a little bit back into it, and, and it'll actually thin it back out again. <clears throat> so it's not necessarily. If, if that's what you're saying about, about it getting grainy. I was more thinking about when you use it sometimes, you get that grainy texture left behind or you 
fuss okay. with it too much and then it gets into your paint or, you know. Okay, but like, it still might be because it's getting too thick. Yeah, no, I know. But I'm, I I get what you're talking about because okay. sometimes there's that just that grain, you yeah. know. But that's what I was thinking. Oh, okay. But. Well, I may have talked too much off off the, the question in order to finish answering it correctly. Yeah, it was. Um, Not that one, that one. When it's concept. When contact cement goes grainy, does it mean it's going off? And is there anything I can do? So yes, you were oh, okay. answering it correct, but I was also thinking that sometimes when you overwork it, it sometimes just yeah. No, I think so. Yeah, if you've got it painted on your prop and it starts to look grainy, what it starts, you can watch it go from being wet because it dries out to being um, to be getting to where it's going to ready to be sticky. And yeah, when it when it starts to look grainy and and, and uh, it can kind of pull, um, it means it's getting ready to stick. <laughs> What do you have? They say I look like Ava Green. Oh! <laughs> awesome. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the jester's laughing, too. Okay, let's see. What are, I, there were some cool questions. Let's see. So, David's asking me, do I have any injury stories that I got from my time with making things for the show? Because uh, everyone's hurt themselves sometimes. Well, yeah, I nick myself with uh, the, the 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 razor knives You're all the time. You're constantly tripping over things. I constantly trip over things. That's the worst. Okay, yes, that's better. So it's not really an injury. Um, my spatial awareness is is I'm, I'm very up up here looking around, and everything I assume has got the same shape going all the way down. So the main tripod, the one I'm talking to now, that that spreads out. The tripod for that particular camera, I trip over its feet all the time. Me too. Okay. I feel like it's like there to be tripped and you have it marked on the floor so it, that it I got marked go on the back. floor so I know where it goes, right? But still, it's just... Those I mean, marks are Toby long. knocked it knocked into it at one point. Nobody's knocked it over, thankfully. Yet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I'm tripping over cameras a lot. And I burn myself with a hot glue gun. Uh, I haven't done anything working that is a really notable injury um nothing nothing super special because i'm not working with the big major machines right um and i have no interest in hurting myself on the table saw that's that's not a life call no. um no so unfortunately that's about it it's, it's hot glue burns it's nicks and it's tripping over the camera i find that since i've started sewing more i've gotten shocked way more than i care to like we wear slippers to keep things clean and on carpet and then so going from machine to machine every time I sit down at a new machine if I don't discharge before I get like major shocking and then I was trying to do a personal project and I was sewing hand sewing these little Tauruses that were metal <laughs> to a project and I kept I was generating a magnetic field which ended up shocking me like I never realized how much you get shocked from shows, shocked from sewing. Shocked, sure. You get, like, I feel like that one was one of those things I found out this year that I have not been enjoying. We're not yeah. in a climate where you can, like, kick your sheets and watch the, the, the sparks fly, because it doesn't really happen here, so, yeah. All day long, I just... <laughs> <laughs> so, that's one of those workplace injuries that I'm not enjoying. Uh... At the station, KVIE, one of the other editors in his office, his office, actually the floor was split between the, the real floor and there's like a drop floor in at, at the station where you can run a lot of equipment cables, right? So you've got, uh, I'm sure this happens in other industries as well, but like a drop ceiling, you got the ceiling tiles, where you have these tiles in the floor that you can pick up for running all the cables for hooking all the equipment together. It's kind of a leftover from everything was, was on tape. Um, so his office was half that floor and half a real floor, and his door was over the false floor. So as he would walk and he'd grab the doorknob, it would shock him. Every damn every time. Every damn day. So one day I go in there, and the inside doorknob is totally covered in electrical tape. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what the hell? Because I'm tired of being shocked. Oh, okay. <laughs> Where did you get the table you work on? Your dad made it. Yes. This table, uh, which is covered with all sorts of stuff at the moment, uh, it's it's two feet by six feet. My dad made this table when I was six months old, eight months old. He actually made a whole furniture set. There was like an eight foot couch that went with it. There was a a, a big chair that we used for the uh, Iron Throne at Smosh. My dad built that chair. Yeah, this uh, was used at Smosh. This too. was used at Smosh. This was part of Castle Black. Yeah. Yeah. 
It wasn't part of the ship set, though. No, it was not part no. of the ship set. But it looked I wasn't like there it could blend set. in with that. Yes. <laughs> that was a different table. It was very similar. It had the ball, the half circle mm -hmm. things around the thing. So this one was similar, but not that one. Remember? Well, yeah. It had all the... Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that circle. Because uh, my dad also made a, a circle table that I brought down. Yeah, that was point. there at Smosh. But uh, yeah. But so that wasn't the pirate table. Right. But... So my dad built it, and it's almost as old as I am. So um, I, I grew up building Lego on this table. So it, 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 I'm really happy to still be at this table, working on it, doing doing my show. So, yay! Yay! Let's see. Um... <laughs> and I've got something in the Discord because all of them enjoyed me talking about it. Train! <laughs> So I'm sure you can hear it. This is a quiet train. What this are you complaining quiet... about? Give it a minute. Um, <laughs> because it's midnight or late at night here, it's not midnight anymore, or technically it's midnight again, depending on how you want to set your clock. We got the midnight special? Yeah, we got the midnight special. And you know the freight trains run longer uh, during the night because they're not interrupting as much traffic. 300 yards that way is one of the main rail lines for Sacramento. It goes up to the Roseville switchyard. So, uh, which is a major switchyard for the area. It was for Southern Pacific. Now Union Pacific owns it. Uh, Dad was a machinist apprentice. Uh, he learned his trade with Southern Pacific. So I grew up kind of with the railroad a tiny bit too. Anyway, it's right there. And, and we're just a concrete wall. There's nothing stopping us. The main studio, because obviously it's next to the railroad as well, has, has got a whole bunch of treatment to it. So you don't hear the train. Uh, in, in the main studio, but, uh, yep. Yay for soundproofing. Yay for soundproofing. Yeah. At my work, the, we're in between two yes. crossings between the train. So it has to hold the horn the entire time while the train's going through one crossing uh -huh. and the other crossing, and we're right between the two crossings. So all you hear is horn. Straight up. And I swear that guy loves his job. He just, every day, <laughs> every day, every day, I'm just going the to residential whole time. Area. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I know people just absolutely, I have a friend who will just sit there and watch those train videos on YouTube all, oh, yeah. all day long. But I swear that guy, he loves his job. Uh, as a kid, I had, uh, well, even a little bit in like freshman in high school, I had uh, HO train set. I, I never got around to fully building it all the way out, but I, I had a lot of the cars and I had, and what I really wanted to do with it was all the weathering. You know, I enjoyed putting it together, I enjoyed painting it, but I really enjoyed weathering it, which I still kind of Making do. it look badass. Yeah, making it look badass and just dirty. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Oh, we got an Eric Gordon just donated $10. Eric, Eric Gordon donated $10? Yeah. Well, thank you, Eric That's Gordon. A question. He Does like he have a question? Know, how do you scale patterns like swords, blasters, scaling? The one okay. thing I've had... I've had the hardest time figuring out, is there a program or something? Also, do you, thank you for the amazing inspiration. So, thank you. Well, do you? You are very good at that. I okay. usually eyeball it, is what I do, but. Uh, I, I do a little more than eyeballing. Um, <laughs> swords are pretty easy to scale, I think, because swords are practically a two-dimensional object to begin with. And so what I base it on is the person's hand. Uh, now my, I've got a, a slightly larger hand, like you know, Felicia and I are kind of the, the Ken and Barbie type hands, but um, still I, I have assumptions of, okay, this is a hand, and so my hand's four inches or four and a half, whatever it is, and, and I start scaling the sword up off of that, uh, maybe taking into account the size of the actor, like when I did Gamora's sword, I knew that scaling it off my hand would be wrong. Um, so that's, that's kind of how I do swords, so I find a... Uh, a, a shot either from the trailer or, or, or some sort of production shot where I can get the sword as flat to the camera as I can. Uh, then I will take that into Photoshop and start blowing the picture up until I can get the hand to be the size that I want it. And that gives me the duration for the rest of the sword. Uh, other patterns, if you want to, could you hand me my black helmet, please? So here's one where um, I didn't have that so much. I took the, uh, in order to do the Black Knight helmet, I took the, the scene from YouTube. Uh, downloaded that, took frames from it uh, on Photoshop to try and figure out how big the helmet is. And if you can't tell, it's too big. It's still too big. It's a little too tall and it's a little too wide. And I actually 
shrunk it down. So it becomes part of the joke of, of Odin making that I make things too big. That's just what I've always done. So I didn't worry too much it's about it. It's usually easier to scale, to have it too big and bring things down. Right. Sometimes it's a pain in the ass that you just don't want to deal with. But, but if you're going to have not enough or too much, I'd rather have too much than not enough. But what I could have done, which I didn't do as I think about it now because I was rushing, um, there's a couple of scenes where it's pretty easy to find the Black Knight standing, you know, none shall pass just before that happens. He's standing very straight up and down, very, very straight to the camera. Uh, John Cleese is 6'4", I think. So I could have guessed that, all right, if John Cleese is 6'4", this is how wide his shoulders are, and I could figure out that dimension, and then that would tell me how wide the helmet was and how tall the helmet was, and I didn't do that. I just started measuring around my head and kind of going for it. That's what I would have done. It has to go on your head, not his. So I would right. measure around my head, see how much I need, and then, yeah. But I could have gotten the ratio, which I don't really have. I mean, I do, but it's, it's, it's a little big. Yeah, it but is, it doesn't fit my buns. So it doesn't fit your buns. <laughs> uh, you know, I can't quote Sir Mix a lot, but you know, Baby Got Back and Buns Hunt and all that. <laughs> Should we put that away, please? Let's see. Thank you. <laughs> what are they saying over there? Uh, my experiment worked. The train went by at exactly the same time. Wait, Doc, are you saying the trains are going by at the same time? Aw, oh, crap. I'd like to make props. Nah. Nah. Just. Yeah. I'll just put it over there. <laughs> it's it's just Nicole having fun making up a, a Back to the Future script. Nice. Ian's uh, server. He just became an uncle again. My sister had a baby on the twenty fourth of this month. I'm happy for my sister and myself. Big smiles. Big smiles. Oh, did they name it like Jack or like what's it? I don't know. Mine. Halloween names. Halloween names, right. I don't know. Yeah. My brother's expecting one. They're going to name it Reagan, and I was going, you can call it Rona Reagan. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, he's going to hate me. So, Anyways. So names in Halloween, this is a weird leap, and this is how, like, left field my brain works. So I'm watching Star Trek Discovery. <laughs> the ship's number is the NCC-1031. Well, immediately my, my brain goes... October 31st? It's the Halloween ship! And that's all I can think about every time they ever give the call numbers for the Discovery. It's the Halloween ship. There you go. Okay. I'm blinking. Do I have a... No, it's just give me Discord notifications. Okay. The helmet can't fel Felicia's <laughs> buns. I'm dead. <laughs> I love it. I'm glad you guys appreciate that. All right. N Nicole's being nice and making fun of the fact that I typically make things too big, but when I built the Curse Crusher from, from onward, I made it too small. <laughs> can't win them all. Nope, can't win them all. <laughs> no. <laughs> Did we miss any other super chat oh, pledges in there? Probably. This thing, like, blew up. Oh, wow, it did. Like. Let's just, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Yonel. Hey, I Hey. Did. How are you? Thank you. So, uh, if any of you have downloaded the original Captain Rex, uh, Captain Rex helmet pattern, Yachty is the one that did the, the initial line work uh, for that for me. So, thank you very much, sir. Toby, all done. He's we don't have a, ca a dog camera at the moment. Sorry, guys. Yeah, but they're being cute and they're dressed up, so there's yeah. that. And then we have $5 from Strass88. Strass88? Okay, hello. Thank you, Strauss88. I did two $5 donations. It was last minute. I realized I could change the price, so sorry putting it twice, but you're very well worth it. Thank you. Oh, so oh, sweet. Thank you. Yeah, and CMR, CMDR Dark Light. CM, CMDR Dark Light. You did $20. Love your work. Just wanted to plug my Instagram. Oh, yes. CM, what is it? <laughs> CMDR underscore dark underscore light. I built Batman. And Halo Master Chief, that's awesome. I've always wanted to do Ma Master Chief. Yeah. It's on my list of I've always wanted to make that costume. That Anyways, one is, okay, that sure. That on my list. Mjolnir armor is very cool. And looking forward to cons coming back to wear them. So that is yes. awesome. Looking Yay. forward to cons coming back. Uh, it looks like SAC Anime, uh, this is a local Sacramento con, um, is going to be able to happen in Placer County, which isn't very far from here, because the Placer County's being able to control itself a little bit better than Sacramento County. Um, and they're going to be able to have SAC Anime on the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd of January 2021. Okay. And there is a small to good-sized chance I'll have a booth there. So that, that should be fun. 
so, sounds interesting. So just, this year has been crazy. You can't make plans, but we're nope. trying our best. And yes, they will be much funner when we go back because everybody's had time to sit and work on all their costumes, right? Right. <laughs> Nobody's waiting to the last minute, right? Y'all. <laughs> Let's see what else people are saying. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead and scroll down and find oh, more. That was the second one. Like, they're right. so sorry, guys, for missing all your chats. You guys. Right, we're just talking away um, uh, and, and trying to enjoy ourselves, and I hope you're enjoying it too. So if you if you're doing a super chat donation for one. You're stellar, and thank you. That's incredibly generous, and 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 and, and that is a huge thank you. Uh, and and I'm really sorry if we happen to miss the notification and don't thank you directly personally right now, which is definitely something that we should do. Yes. So. So. Starius is saying that he watched The Monster Squad today, which is a movie I enjoy. Steve Wang is a fantastic sculptor. He did the, the creature for that movie. Um, and he says he watched it the first time today since he was a kid. And man, was that a... Uh, yeah, that is a love letter to the old Universal Monster movies. Absolutely. The costume for their version of the creature from the Black Lagoon was fantastic. I wish I saw more of him in that movie. Yes. Um, the, the two things I distinctly remember about Monster Squad... Uh, aside from it being a really good non-universal take on the universal classic monsters, uh, the werewolf was, was roadkill. That's how they killed the werewolf in the movie. They ran him over. And, and so it was a really good roadkill effect for the werewolf. <laughs> and then the creature from the Black Lagoon was sculpted by um, uh, Steve Wang, who did the live-action Guyver movie. He's done, uh, he, he sculpted the bat suit for Batman Returns. It wasn't his design. That was Bob Ringwood, but he's the one that did the work. Steve Wang is a very fast, very uh, anatomically correct, and very talented sculptor. And, um, and yeah, I really like his work. I really like his creature. You can find him on Instagram and see the, some of the stuff he's done recently. I think he's worked on the Men in Black films. And Steve Wang is a huge, not huge, Steve Wang is a friend of Evil Ted Smith. The time I got to talk to Evil Ted, both of us went down the rabbit hole of, of Steve Wang praise, which, is, <laughs> which, is, which was fun. Is so, that Toby? Somebody's barking. Well... I hear Toby barking, and yeah. I hear Zoe and Grim and Grim barking. I think there's two dogs in the backyard. Yeah. Toby, come here, baby. I thought Toby's not right there. What? I think they need to use the bathroom. Let them go. Let me go to let them out. That's what they're asking for. Sorry. BRB. Yep, that's fine. Uh, oh, I'm standing. And also, I want to sing. What's that song? All right, let's go through the uh, YouTube chat and see if there's anything i got to catch up on. Oh, no, I'm pretty good there. So, for all of you, if any of you, uh, go, going back to Evil Ted Smith and, and, and Steve Wang, there's a movie that I remember uh, finding through a magazine called Film Threat. This was a magazine that came out in the early 90s. Um, and the movie is called Kung Fu Rascals. So, Kung Fu Rascals is not a good film. Uh, this is Steve Wang's personal uh, film he made. It's his uh, it's his out of out of pocket eight millimeter film that 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 he shot. But what it is, it's it's very effects heavy. You've got uh, giant frogmen that could run super fast through through the the forest and uh, crazy wacky kung fu characters doing crazy wacky kung fu things. And the movie ends with uh, mega titans. One comes up out of the uh, ocean uh, a lot like Godzilla but it's a big stone kind of a fat Buddha type titan not that's don't quote me for saying Buddha but that gives you the idea and the other one stone titan comes out of uh out of, out of the, the the cliff there on on the beach and and the two of them duke it out using force perspective so all the effects were in camera uh on the beach and actually evil Ted I think is the one that came out of the water and Steve Wang is the one that came out of the 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 cliff, if I remember right, Ted was just telling me this. I didn't know it beforehand. You can find the movie. I've got it on DVD. It's it's fun. It's bad. Uh, just know that the majority of the cast was paid with Happy Meals, so uh, that's kind of the budget the movie had. Uh, but it's it's and fun. That's our budget. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly our budget. And I um, get paid in Happy Meals. You, you do. So so Kung Fu Rascals is is is. Is fun, but know what you're getting into. It's not going to be, wow, this is better than Citizen Kane. No, it's more like, wow, this is better than Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. That's about the level it's at. Hi, Toby. Are you being a good boy? 
Oh, they can't see your Halloween oh. costume. I'm so sorry. We don't have the camera set up for the dogs. I got so worried about getting all the extra things set up, I didn't get a dog camera set up. Uh, they are. Bruno can come up. He's whittle yeah. enough. Nope, that's just, oh, hey, if I get out of the way. Toby, come here. No, he, he's, he's, he's right. Just out of shot. Toby, come here. Here, up, 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 come here. Up, 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 come here. Yeah, come on. There he oh, is. There he is. Say hi, Toby. <laughs> Toby's really good. He doesn't want to put his feet on the table. <clears throat> yeah, he has manners, unlike Bruno. <laughs> right. <laughs> we all know Bruno is our... My crazy little gypsy dog. So there's our obligatory dog shot for the evening. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's that guy, too. Okay. Oh, so what did I miss? Um, well, I talked about Steve Wang and talked about uh, the movie that uh, he worked on with Evil Ted. And, and uh, Staria says, took note, Kung Fu Rascals, and I have to look it up. <clears throat> Meanwhile, we got a couple of other rascals who were happy to have gone to the bathroom and attacking each other right in front of the camera. Uh, I'm being asked what scary movies am I watching this spooky season. Or actually, he, he wrote spoopy season. <clears throat> spoopy season. Spoopy Snoopy. season. Snoopy season. Um... Actually, what's interesting is when I go home, I don't watch a lot of scary movies because my wife really doesn't like them. Uh, so I haven't watched as many recently. Um, I'm trying to get her to warm up to the idea of watching uh, uh, Cabin in the Woods because that thing's just phenomenal. I love that movie. Uh, but, but for the most part, I, have, I really haven't watched any spooky movies. No, I really haven't. I've been going through, but I don't think I've been going that scary. I think I've been going more classics. Right. Yeah. I don't know. I was doing the Summer Ween episode of Gravity Falls, you know, what they have on Disney Prime. <laughs> you know what I yeah, mean. Yeah, sure. Going through all those. Gravity Falls is great. I've seen one episode, but it was great. Oh. Uh, uh, DIY Prop Shop. I got, I got asked repeatedly to, to make the journals. Yeah, I could see that. I yep. could see that. I also like the memory eraser gun. Yes, very <laughs> much so. That one would be a fun one. But yeah, I've just been dorking out on just like the Halloween specials and nothing actually scary. There is exactly the right uh, descriptor for Kung Fu Rascals. Nicole says, this movie is like, wow, it's better than Green Lantern. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tis but a scratch. Tis but a scratch. I've hurt worse. <laughs> Real motivation. Yep. Um, let's see. Tuxedo dog, such a dodge, much tuck. Isn't that the cutest tuxedo for Bruno? I had to. I could not. not. It was adorable. <laughs> oh, yeah. I have my pew pews. You know, props that go with my costume, right? Right. Even though technically they're wrong, but I don't care. There's been years that I thought these were Princess Leia's guns, but it's Lando's. No. <laughs> I was wrong. I will admit it's it. Django's. But they're mine. Django's? Django. 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 Fett. Django Fett. Really? Why mm -hmm. did I think it was Lando? Because I feel like Lando would have a sparkly Because they, they kind of almost, well, yeah, yes. Because uh, they almost rhyme. I don't know. But they're, they're Django Fett's guns from, yeah. from Attack of the Clones. Yeah, so. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I always dress Princess Leia up with these guns. Sure. They look like Princess Leia's guns because they're very they're very uh, sleek and small and they have the longer barrel. You know, and they match. Her barrel is actually longer, but still. And yeah. they match. Yep. Pew, pew. Okay, what's the worst material you've used? Well, it depends on the project, but I hate acetate. Yeah, okay. It, it dissolves in acetone. It's a pain in the ass to sew. It's slippery, and it stinks, and it stains, and I hate it. So there's that. So there's that. Yeah, that's that, that's pretty straightforward. Most finals. Most, yeah, um, fuck vinyl. I mean, yeah, pretty much, fuck vinyl. <laughs> uh, it, vinyls are a it. world of promise. They look good. They, they well, they look like vinyl, you but but you get good vinyls. You can sew them. They're great. They have a nice, nice cheap texture for for cheap leather. You can't glue anything to them easily. It takes super specialized glue. You that can I think really of workarounds. Yeah. So can't spray paint it. It will never dry. Oh, vinyl will never dry. You have to think dry. about their chemical composition in order to just work with them. Right. So, so. vinyl. Let's see. Uh, I've got a nice oversized Star Lord trench uh, coat that's vinyl. Um, this was uh, when I made the Star Lord helmet. Uh, there was a costume company that that we uh, was working with, and they 
gave me the Star Lord costume to go along with it, and it needs to be weathered. But it's a really soft. It's a nice vinyl. It's vinyl. Very supple. Very supple. So the only way I could paint this is using an automotive spray paint that's made specifically for vinyl. The automotive industry has made a spray that you can use for the upholstery on older cars, which is almost all vinyl. And um, it is the most wonderfully toxic, noxious, noxious uh, spray paint that I know of, but it works. It bonds to vinyl and it bonds it well enough that you can sit on it because it's upholstery. And we used it on a chair, so there's... And we used it on a chair. And we've used it for, for toy uh, dinosaurs. I would have to spray a little bit of that into something. You'd have to do a test so spot because this one, I feel like hmm. just feeling it, it would melt. Like it, even with yeah. the right stuff, it just feels. And nothing would stick to it. Right. It's really slippery. There, we go. there you go, that makes more sense. Yeah. But yeah, this yeah. is one of those things that it's not going to be easy to paint, to glue. Right. So aside from looking like a truck when I'm wearing it because I'm just such a dainty person, um, the fact that it's not weathered and looks brand new actually bugs me and that's why I, I hardly ever wear it. So I'd want yeah. to want to weather this and then could I would probably be happy edges? with it. I could, but no, it's more, more of a dark, more of just yeah. getting the black and a little bit of brown not to dirty it and to put shadows yeah. onto it. Well, that's just saying the Dremel would give a rougher texture to it. Okay. To then be able to dirty and I could probably just rub the whole thing down with like a, a sandpaper and then sand actually paper using like an guard. actual like chocolate, -right. like using chocolate if you oh. dig it into it, like dirt or a fake dirt, you know, like those plates. Sure. Yeah. So if you had the texture and then you're not actually painting it, you'd be actually dirty. Okay. But it's, it's vinyl. Folks. Vinyl. Yeah. Vinyl. Uh, acrylic. Workarounds. Acrylic tries on vinyl. That's about it. <laughs> well, there's that. Okay, let's see what people are saying. Tis but a scratch. Tis but a scratch. Hi, Toby. Yes, the dogs are having fun. Oh. It's well past their bedtime, but they're, they're they're all excited to be up. I'm losing my buns. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nicole, I hate those three hundred dollar vinyl costumes like Batman or Captain America. <laughs> okay, so tip on those ones. So Ruby's and the other company. It starts with an S, and they they're out of the UK. Shh. Anyways, they have different price points for their costumes. So they have like Batman and they have the $25, the $45, the $55, the $85, the $500. And right. each of those different price points are different materials. And so you're playing for your different quality depending on how high you go up in there. Right. And so if you really want a good Batman costume, I would get the $500 one. That one is rubber. It's... It's what you want when you're going a con right. if you're going to purchase it. And, but, you know, the $45 ones, those ones can be updated. Just throwing that one out there just from experience of ordering those wholesale. Mm -hmm. can, I'd suggest if you have a wholesale license, get those wholesale. They're a whole lot cheaper. But Ruby's, um, Schmitty's, I think is that. So Schmitty? That sounds right. It sounds right. It's been so long since I've ordered, like, I used to do buying for a costume shop and got things from everywhere but I do know that Ruby's and Schmidt's and there's one other company they each own different licenses for right. costumes and depending on who owns what license I believe they all have like DC and Marvel but you know there are definitely different qualities depending on the price point you're shopping at eh. more you know right we're talking costumes <laughs> Uh, one of my friends <clears throat> who's a Deadpool cosplayer, uh, it's at K-O-T-J Cosplay on Instagram, has a very high-end Deadpool yeah. uh, costume that, that is got vinyl on it, but you look at it, it looks like the movie suit. And, and, and since I've known him, I'm actually able to get up and see how the costume works and how it fits together. It is really well made. Um, yeah, you yeah. pay for it, you get it. Yeah, <laughs> there are the price points where you do. It. Then sometimes they use the photo of the nice one, but you're actually only spending like fifty bucks on it, and it isn't the nice yeah, one. Yeah. But they use the photo. Don't Sounds like wish. Yeah, yeah. That's why you have to know what you're buying. Anyways, um, let's see. Tis but a free. Tis a wound, a flesh butt. <clears throat> That's all out of order. I can't read that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, let's see. Are the dogs all right? They sound like they're fighting. They're just playing. They're just playing. They're play fighting. 
There we go. So I got that. To Toby's very speed. gentle with Bruno, and Bruno's not very gentle with Toby, but Toby doesn't feel it. So they get along very well. They're BFFs. Smithies. Yes, it is Smithies. It's been a while, but we always had to at least have, um, we had to order a certain amount from them before we could place an order because it mm -hmm. was so expensive <clears throat> to ship from the UK, so we had to make it worth it. Yes. So we didn't order from them <clears throat> as often, but I did like their selection, so when we ordered, we had a lot of fun and went all out. And I Sweet. Remember. Rubies, we did a lot of smaller orders from, but well, they had a good They're catalog. domestic. Yeah, they're domestic. Uh, I got I got. Patreons, why not? Yes. Uh, Nicole is asking if I can uh, punch up the Batman costume that she put together. So can awesome. you hit camera four? Camera four. Batman. Batman. Have you been Batman before? You've been Lego Batman. I've been Lego Batman. I, I brought Lego Batman out to um, to try and put it on. But, yeah, we um, haven't been playing dress up, have we? No, we haven't. But uh, yeah, made a... Uh, let's bring that up. There we go. Ooh. Made his own uh, foam helmet. And where's the other Captain America shield? I'm trying to go through really quick here. And Captain America shield, also made by my patron. Oh, nice. Is that cardboard or plastic? Uh, Fabricated plastic? Or is it foam? And I'm just. That one I'm not sure on, if it's uh, cardboard or plastic. Huh. Oops. Ah, tripping over stuff. You okay? Yeah, I should move the trash can. Ooh. All right. Ready? Yeah. I'm Batman. <laughs> I'm Batman. Yes. I'm Batman. <laughs> Rachel! <laughs> I'm Batman. Oh, I love the Batman sets. Yeah. They the were Bat my favorite. I used to dress up as Batman to dress up Batman. Yes, you did. <laughs> I remember that. Yes, always trying out the costumes, making sure that they worked. <laughs> or having my own versions of the costumes while we were working. Yeah, there you go. But yes, I am totally losing my buttons. Yes. <laughs> That's okay. Hey, Nicole King, I actually used your helmet pattern. I'm told the Captain America shield is cardboard, and thank you. Yes, it looks very nice. It looks very nice. Both are very well done. Yeah, I love props. Where are they? <laughs> get, get, I'm getting my uh, lines. You know, get, getting my lines from the side. I got my cue card over here, so I can remember what I'm supposed to say. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I'm Batman. Medieval a, Batman. Medieval Batman. None shall, well, pass. What, what, what would Batman say? I don't know. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> when it's yellow, let it, I love when it's brown. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what that Batman said. I thought, bravely brave Sir Robin. <laughs> oh, I was love it, it. When, when, uh, no, was it? When danger reared its ugly head, he bravely turned his tail and fled. <laughs> there you go. Yep. Brave, 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 Sir Robin. Frank Castle wants to know, do you guys usually stay up late? Yes, he I does. usually do. I do. I'm, no. I'm up all, all sorts of weird hours. Nope, I do not. I work really early in the morning, so I am in bed pretty early, unfortunately, because right. my schedule shifted. But when I used to just do this kind of stuff all the time, yeah. 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 Since since I'm in a, in a, in a, in a creative space and, and kind of abusing my own schedule I'm, I'm all over the place when i had a job where i had to be at work early at like your kind of hours where you have to be at work at five or six in the morning yeah i'd go to bed early and, and, and get up early to do it uh, properly but at this point nah i'm rarely in bed before midnight i'm usually it's usually the next day before i go to bed and there are days that i don't go to bed tonight like tonight, yeah. I will probably go directly from this with a big bag of candy up to my edit bay and start hammering out uh, the video for this costume. So, yes, which that one should be fun because I really liked playing with the. Yeah, this mail. was great. So the the chainmail was a lot of fun because this was the 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 uh, it was a knit sweater that that you had found. Yeah, at the thrift that, store. At the thrift store. So this is the pearl side of the knit, so it's actually inside out and and trivia. Knitting, knitting is what most of the chainmail was in Monty Python and the Holy Grail. There's a little bit of real chainmail uh, around their heads, but the majority of what they're wearing is just knit. And you can even see the seams. Sorry, see the seams like these. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see the seams because your flax are very dark, but you can see them in the Monty Python when I was looking at it. But also, giant TV HD. Maybe not three, maybe I don't know. But, see the seam? Yeah, see these seams? You could totally see them in Monty Python, and I loved it. You mostly saw them at the shoulder, right? 
at this point, and they right. tried to hide him, but... Yeah, the shoulder here, yeah. Yeah, they tried to hide him, but it's like when you get the you, big TV and you have it where in HD when it's not necessarily meant to be watched like that, you can really see the details, and I was geeking out over it. Especially when you're a customer and it's your job to notice things like that. So I had a friend that was really, really good at lighting. It was That was like his thing. Oh, yeah. And, and they could just see how they, the lighting he, setup he was would, by the yeah, eyeballs. He, you could see the eyeballs or you could see the shadows and stuff on the walls. And he's, he would look at the set and go, boy, this movie bugs me. It's like, well, why is that, Tim? Well, they got this light. There's no window there. Why is this light there? It's like, wow, that's what bugs you, Tim? <laughs> you know, I, I've noticed that happens to a lot of people in the industry. <laughs> yes. That they lose that magic because you can see like, ooh, I see this or that. I haven't lost it. You can still like have a great movie and get lost. Yes. And the costumes, because I feel like you can really appreciate and geek out at the costumes. Maybe they're not historically correct. Yes, maybe you can see a scene, but I feel like that's just. I don't no, know. I, I get it. What uh, what I've often thought and said, if the movie is entertaining enough that I can get caught up in the movie and letting it tell its story, then that's great. But if it's not entertaining enough for me for that, then yeah, I'll look at the props and, and, and I'll look for the mold lines that it'll belong in. And, and, There's uh, so, many yeah. out, so many movies where the costumes are amazing, but the story is just Is Is as cardboard as the acting, yeah. And, you, it, and it doesn't matter how good the costumes are. Right. It's not going to be a good movie. But you can have a good movie with terrible costumes. Yes, absolutely. And it'd be amazing. So, as much as I love costumes, I don't lose the magic. Yeah, good. Watching. No, I don't either, really. Yeah. And um, there was, I can't remember, I think it was the cameraman or, or the lighting guy with a David Lynch story having to do with Moonlight. And David Lynch, uh, I think this might even been Twin Peaks, the movie, um, was complaining about how the light couldn't be coming from, or there was no reason for it to be coming from that direction. Where they have this, this magic light of yeah, magic there light. is no sun and in that direction, but why are we wishing? Yeah. Yeah, well, it was, it was nighttime. Yeah but, yeah, but. So the director couldn't let it go, so finally the, the, the director of photography, who knew he needed to have the light or he weren't going to be able to see anything, finally said, Why does this bother you, David? Where's the music coming from? <laughs> <laughs> Go. Yeah, there's, honestly, there's the medium of telling the story and let the story be told. <laughs> honestly, if people notice the mistakes, right, I find that kind of a compliment that they were paying that much attention to notice that there is right. randomly an extra cup in, on the set that right. wasn't there before, or that their <laughs> costumes suddenly changed color, or blah, 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 right, blah, right. anything. I love it when y'all notice it. Because or like when your buns are falling off your head? Oh yeah, no, I'm gonna totally lose these. these oh yeah, <laughs> these are going to stay. No, but we have plenty of other things. Yeah, I got plenty of other things. We don't necessarily have plenty of time. We don't. Well, we're we're down to. Uh, it is currently 1:30 because technically the clock still gets set back until two. So yeah, we're we're we're, we're getting down we're to getting the down home to stretch it? here. Yeah. Happy Halloween. Go Happy away, or I'll talk fun. to you a second time. <laughs> Double midnight. Hello, I'm from the Chess Czech Republic. Hi. Oh yeah. Czech Republic. Hi. Yes, the Black Knight from Monty Python. Yes, that's what Odin is. Just in case you guys yeah. didn't know. So uh, Starius just sent over a picture. It's four. Uh, yeah, four. It'd be fine. Um, that Odin's Black Knight costume could almost work as the version of Marvel's The Black Knight as well. <laughs> this is very close, yes. What's funny is how close this helmet is to the Nova Corps helmets from uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, the design they specifically had for that. Nice. <clears throat> I feel like, yeah, actually over the sweater sleeves, I would do a printed chainmail. Yeah. I think that would be the perfect application I, for a printed chainmail sleeve. I think it would be, yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Ready? Back to one, yep. Halloween was yesterday for me. So it was for me too. Yes. <laughs> we are almost into second Halloween midnight. Well, we're past it, right? It depends on how you want to look at it. Yeah. Well, yeah. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. We could be, you know, at one o'clock it was either the second midnight or when it becomes two o'clock it becomes the second one o'clock, whatever. You know. Yep. <clears throat> I wasn't here for much of the live, so what is Odin's costume? 
Uh, the costume I'm wearing is the Black Knight from Monty Python on the Holy Grail. Tis but a scratch. Your arm's off. No, it isn't. <laughs> I've hurt worse. So uh, the, the helmet's off to the side. You can't quite see it. It's behind Felicia. But uh, this is actually the video that I'm going to be putting out on Wednesday, is, is uh, building the Black Knight helmet. And she was nice enough to give me a hand getting the rest of the upper body put together. The... The, the, the warthog, or the, the, the boar, um, actually it's more of a boar, not a warthog, um, design was actually cut out on, not a Cree cut, uh, cutter, but a silhouette cutter, but the same thing, when a, a robotic you know, cutting device on a poster board that we then applied with uh, spray adhesive, just a, a, a movable, you know, Eileen's uh, flexible, movable spray adhesive, suck that down to the duvetine fabric, and then sponge painted in order to get the design on here in the right proportions. Yay it, for technology. Yay for technology. It was one of those things that was a lot of setup, but when the actual painting happened, it went very quickly and it was very accurate. Uh, it probably could have been done faster if we just grabbed a paintbrush and went for it, but it wouldn't have been as accurate. <laughs> I think it turned out great. I think so too. I'm not going to complain. Um, Felicia, will you be going to still do gymnastics teaching? Not till things get better, COVID-wise. Right. I was back in it, and March I stopped because COVID. I caught everything that went around in the gym. It is not a hygienic place, so. Well, it's also the age group. I mean, not not, not to belittle the littles. It's the age group uh, that you're teaching, too, right? Because you're doing... Young, younger gymnastics, you're not... No, I actually teach everybody. Like, oh, I was working with grown-ups, too. All right. Yeah, no. All right. I teach, like, from right. the youngest is, like, 18 months walking, like, right. little kids' gymnastics, teaching forward rolls, car you know, like, little kids, uh -huh. up to grown-ups who want to just learn how to do, like, a back handspring or a back tuck. So, yes, I, I, I've been coaching gymnastics for years and years and years. Very so. cool. Yes. You can do cartwheels. I believe in you. Okay, let's see. I can't wait to see MCU Black Knight costume. Right, MCU Black Knight costume will look great. I love Batman. Just... Yeah, well, there's a different, yeah, you know, Batman is, but you know, it's, that's DC. MCU Black Knight is Black Knight, quite Black... a different character. It's I not the Dark thinking, Knight. Oh, I was thinking Dark Knight. Oh my gosh, right. it's late. It's late, it's Happy okay. It was the one that we that we had brought up on four. But I got a oh, different yeah. picture up on four now. One of my patrons, um, uh, what was it, K.O. Makes Things? Anyway. Made that. Made this. This fantastic Jared costume. This is uh, Jared the Goblin King from Labyrinth. Let's see this one. Yeah. K.O. makes things. And K.O. Is, is their initials. And uh, yeah. Uh, apparently quite the, the Labyrinth fan and uh, putting this together. Wow. And at one point was, yeah, all these feathers in the back were foam that were cut out. Um, and at one point was trying to track down exactly the right model of teddy bear that they used in filming so they could get a hold of the teddy bear and add that to their Labyrinth collection. So that's, I really appreciate getting pictures from, from your guys' cosplay. So, so thank you. I love you. seeing your photos. Yes, I do. A lot. And I'm, and I'm happy that I maybe figured out a way that I can share the photos on a live stream. I know, right? This is kind of fun. This is, this is kind of working. Of course, you guys get to see all the tabs over there, but you know, whatever. <laughs> It's a live stream. It's a live stream. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Four? Oh, no. Yep. So, Star has found a nice old school uh, cover, which is even more medieval the way it looks. Which, yeah. So, there was, a, there was a few years there where I worked at a comic shop, and I don't remember this particular issue, but I do remember the character. I didn't read any of the books, but I do remember the character. Yeah. I worked at the comic shop when uh, Doomsday came out and, and killed Superman. That was that was the years I was working at the comic shop. Oh. And Nicole is saying that that is the Nathan Garrett Black Knight. So that's interesting. This is this is information I didn't know that the MCU was 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 actually developing the Black Knight character, or maybe maybe that's just the character in the book, and I'm totally putting too much thought into this. Odin's not his real name, right? Nope, totally is. It's my given name. Odin. I was I was born Odin. So why not be Odin? Why would I want to be somebody else? <laughs> could be anyone. Orin. Could be anyone. I could be Orin. I was almost Owen. But uh, no, Odin is my actual real name. So I'm using my real name on the internet. <laughs> Who does that? I don't know, Felicia. Who does that? <laughs> Nobody. 
Toby? Shh. Right. Yeah, that is his real name. What am I kidding? <laughs> yeah, but his taxes are harder to fake. Okay, let's see. Here's another great uh, cardboard costume from Rodimus Prime. <laughs> so what is this? Uh, uh, Hascon 2017 in this costume made from cardboard. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, I'm losing my buns. They are coming out. I'm You're losing your buns? No. I'm losing my buns. They have well, not survived the night. Oh no, go ahead and punch one if you, unless you're like really embarrassed about your buns. A little bit. A little bit, all right. Can't lose my buns in front of everyone. <laughs> so many inappropriate jokes. Wow, yeah, this one contact thing works for cons, but I can't read a computer monitor from five feet away. Daniel Wiggins is saying that, that uh, he teaches little kids at a gym and they clean up after every rotation. I believe that. Uh, I just don't think the gyms are open right now around well, us. Well, the gyms are. I just choose not to go in because, oh, okay. you know, safety first right now and I don't coach gymnastics because I make more money doing other things. I just did that for fun. Okay. But I don't um, want to get sick for fun. So typical ID-10T is pointing out that uh, Marvel's Moon Knight is more similar to Batman. And that's right. Aren't they developing Moon Knight as well? Of course, you know, he's, he's, he's of course, the opposite, right? Because he's all white, but, you know, the, the costume is, like, all white. And, and, and his mouth is covered. You don't see... He's got a much more COVID-friendly uh, uh, mask because he doesn't have a cow with an open mouth. It's, he's, he's all totally covered, if I remember right. Green eyes. I'll be a different princess. There you are. I lost my buns. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm yeah. not Princess Leia anymore. Not Princess Leia anymore? Now you're the inflatable princess? <laughs> well, originally this was supposed to be RBG, but... I forgot the rest of the outfit. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's not on that rack of all those outfits. Anyways. Anyways. Million costume ideas. <laughs> million costume ideas. All the costume ideas. All the costume ideas. This one was a fun one. I was thinking about doing Darkwing Duck and using this feather dress. Oh, there you go. Whoops. Eh, that's just a... You dropped your... your uh, mermaid corset. Mermaid top. Yes, but using this as a duck butt with yellow leggings and then doing a double-breasted jacket for the top. I don't know. So many fun things. Oh! So many fun things. <laughs> oh, I see what's happening. Okay. Try it. Try it. Okay, let's see what people are saying. Mom, um, Mom, can you untie my shoes? <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I locked you in, didn't I? There you go. Thank you. Oh, I guess Felicia is now Vasper Lynn from Casino Royale. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I could be a lot of things here. I could be a fairy godmother. Well, somebody had sent a picture, I think, Ooh, of that, of that character. Picture. Oh, it was a while ago. I got to scroll to find it. Oh, okay. The one that you saw it, where you look like the, the person. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Things. Duck butt, my new favorite word. <laughs> duck butt. Yep. I don't know. I just saw that dress, and I was like, you know, this makes a perfect duck butt. It's a costume, right? Yeah. Grab one of my favorite ones over here. Which one are you doing? Oh, an easy one. Oh, I love that one. There you go. Yep. Hey, Odin, what is the type of material material is in your Lego Batman mask to allow you to see? Isn't that just mesh, white mesh, or is Effectively, that? Effectively, yeah, but specifically, um, we'll, we'll pick it up and show it to camera three here in a second. Uh, it's Speaker Girl, actually, from a pair of old computer speakers. Oops, that's, that's really? the wrong way. Put it this way. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, Nice. There we go. Okay, why don't you show Which camera three? Yeah. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> so, specifically, here's the... So, the Black Knight uh, eyes are... Uh, can, is there any way we can... No, not really. It's, it's speaker mesh. It is just an old pair of PC speakers, and it's a really fine mesh that was, uh, I think it was a dark gray originally, so I just spray painted white 
on the outside and they're spray painted black on the inside to make sure that all the light is reflected away. So yeah, you can actually kind of see, see through it there on the camera a little bit. So it's very easy to see through. And what's nice is because they're a mesh, they don't fog up. I can actually feel the air go through these. I've had, after I did this helmet, I had a couple of other friends who were doing uh, uh, the crow-headed guy, I always say his name wrong from My Hero Academia. Um, go ahead and close the door. Um, the, uh, redid his eyes with a mesh. And I've had a couple of other people do a mesh for their eye covering because it doesn't fog up. It breathes, it gives a, a place for the heat to, to escape. And, and, and it works really well. So uh, that's, it's just an old pair of creative uh, speakers. So, yay for speakers. Yay for speakers. So yeah, I, I decided to throw this cosplay on. Now, stupid joke that I love to throw out, because I wore this at Dragon Con and I wore this to uh, LA uh, Comic Con last year. Um, is it still cosplay? If I'm wearing the hand-me-downs, I mean, this is this is legitimately pre-Weight Watchers Kevin Smith uh, hockey jersey. This this is you, know, you you go back to 2017 and he was wearing this jersey or whatever it was. So on, on the IMDb boat. So this is this is it. And I met Kevin Smith wearing this jersey at LA Comic Con, and and he at least was uh, was worn beforehand by a, by a uh, mutual friend, Will Wilkins, and uh, it was great because he is saying hi to all these uh, Jay and Silent Bob cosplayers and, and the Kevin Smith cosplayers. He walks up to me, oh, you're Odin! <laughs> <laughs> he knows your name! I would be like... <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, that was me. <laughs> that was great. Super nice guy, and, and Jay is a great nice guy, too. Nice. Yeah. I think it does count. You think it does count as cosplay? Because I'm not Kevin Smith. No, I know. Yeah. Yeah, so it's cosplay stuff. Well, because it's a costume at that point. Yeah. And, and, and for once, of all the different costumes I've worn tonight, since I've got shorts on, I've actually got the right pants on for this costume. <laughs> Robocop style. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Three. Four. Four. Who sent us this? Oh, Starius, of course. Starius is quite good at finding the gifts for us. Ah, uh, so there's some duck butt. <laughs> yeah. Toot toot. Train. Yeah. <laughs> Dog cough. <laughs> you know, I don't even hear the train. Uh, yeah, I didn't hear that one. But it's, it's the microphone, so they actually do hear it differently. And, and yeah, I, I notice the train most when I'm trying to do my voiceovers. I actually record my voiceovers in the same spot. That way it kind of sounds the same. It, it never does. Um, so I'm more attuned to hearing the trains at that point. Oh, now I hear it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's fun. Uh, there was a point in time, I talked about this before on, on a previous live stream, that the local Channel 3 uh, KCRA, uh, the, the NBC affiliate, uh, wanted to interview me for whatever story they were doing. Uh, it, was, it was a local businesses type story. And so they came by, this is during the day, and I warned them that the train tracks are back there. And they're setting everything up, and they were here a good 45 minutes, getting the lights put up, getting me mic getting focused, set up, you know, because there's a bit involved with actually getting a good good shot. Um, and they're asking me, well, do I know what the train schedule is? <laughs> and, and deadpan, I just looked at the producer and told her that, yeah, the train will come about a minute after you hit record. And that's exactly when the train went through. <laughs> yep. Yep, you gotta love it, sound guys. You gotta love gotta the love trains, it. the dogs, the construction, and when it's all happening at the same time. Leaf blowers. I'm not a hand guy. <laughs> <laughs> to each their own. Yeah. Right. It's all good. I still need my hat. It's even the wrong, it's a white hat, but it's even the wrong hat because it should have the little, little click. But You're right, it should be a snap cap. But snap. snap caps don't fit. Snap. Cap. I had to get a slightly larger size so it would actually fit because snap it back caps don't fit. <laughs> really? I thought yeah. that they would go bigger. Um, there are one size fits most. Yeah, you're right. You're very much right. Yeah, and I, I'm just I'm just outside of. Uh, I'm like, if the size is continued, I'm one size larger than the military scale for helmet sizes, and I think that's all the hats do. And so Yay. I can kind of wear one, but it's not comfortable. No, <laughs> that one's actually snug. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
Oh, wow. We are almost done. Has yeah. it, this day has just gone by. I hope you guys had fun Halloween. <laughs> <sighs> right. Yeah, I'm getting, uh, if I was to cut the top of this off, it'd still be Captain Smith from All Rats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> so we just kind of really let the, let, let the time go and had a lot of fun. I hope you guys had a lot of fun. Uh, it, I really enjoyed getting to, to answer questions, uh, getting to try to talk to some of you. One of the really nice things for me with the chat interface and, and, and something I've seen with all the live streams, even the ones that I did a long time ago, it's a lot like talking to people, just like you, you're, you're chatting and you know you're talking or texting, you know you're talking to someone. Even though I'm in the room and I'm realistically, I'm looking at a camera, I'm talking to a camera, I know that you're watching and we've got communications going, so know that I'm talking to you. And I really appreciate all the all the questions, the shout outs, the requests for props, even though we don't acknowledge those much in the live stream. Uh, the hello from different countries, that's amazing to know what kind of reach we've got. That just <laughs> blows my mind that someone on the other side of the world is... Is, is watching. It's here yeah. with us. Exactly, it's here with us. Is someone someone who's looking at the sun while uh, we're not <laughs> right yeah, right so um thank you i really appreciate those of you who stuck it out super late at night to to watch us and for those of you that for once were in a time frame that you can actually watch us when it's comfortable for you um yeah so i mid midnight double live stream two hours to get an hour to go by something like Our that double midnight madness <clears throat> double midnight madness was 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 a lot of fun and I think I think it was pretty much a success. I think. I had fun. Did you have fun? I had a lot of fun. Did y'all have fun? I hope you guys had fun. I hope you enjoyed this. Yeah. So I babbled a lot. Was there anything you wanted to to babble on about? Uh, Babylon five? I don't know, you just get me talking about costumes and I can just you know. <laughs> so So to be honest, we had a lot of costume planned there at first. Doing the tour um, you may have noticed there was a costume draped over one of the uh, the booths, and you may not have, and that's okay. She wanted to answer the door with me on the outside, answered as Princess Leia, and I was supposed to come through and kind of go around the long way while she quick changed into a 50s poodle skirt to meet me in the malt shop. <laughs> she yeah. had so many costumes planned for tonight. We have quick changes are what I do yep. really easily. Hide in the background, be a next person, next outfit, move on. Yep. <laughs> but I'm having fun, and I was kind of enjoying being Princess Leia. I always wanted to dress up like her. I've done it a few times, but, you know, like, right. I don't know. Got into it until I lost my buns. <laughs> <laughs> Happens. And now I get to be the fairy godmother. There I'm not go. Cinderella. I have wings. Wings, yes. Yes. Anyway, sh I'd rather be her than Cinderella any days, because she has magic. Right. She makes the pretty dresses, which is yes. what I do. She makes the glass uh, shoes. Yeah. That are a perfect fit, yet fell off. Wouldn't fit anybody else in the kingdom. It was a perfect fit for her foot, but it fell off. Yeah. Maybe her foot sweat. I'm <laughs> just was glass. saying, you walk in heels and there's no flexibility. I can yeah. see them going flip. flip. Yeah. So. I know I've lost plenty of shoes, had those Cinderella moments, can't complain, but honestly, right. I'd rather be the fairy godmother than yeah, Cinderella. Sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I also have the evil stepmother right here. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you do. <laughs> Aww, so pretty. <laughs> what fell? Oh, Tinkerbell wings. Tinkerbell Toby's wings. Tinkerbell wings fell. Oh, yeah, no, there's, oh, oh, Cinderella. Not a Cinderella. We have lots of costumes. We never even got into any of them. We never really got into any of them, no. We live costumes. We live, we, I, I live mostly props, but they're effectively an extension of costumes, and she full-on lives costumes. Yeah. Very much so. Yeah. Wow. So I haven't printed it out yet, but... Um, after the last Monday live stream, speaking of costumes, Felicia and I on Mondays, and we'll be doing it again this Monday at noon, uh, we'll be continuing our work on the Witcher cost, uh, armor that we've been doing. And we get about 15 minutes of work done every two hour period, so it's going to take a little while to get it finished. But um, everything is happening on screen, everything is happening in front of you, we're not getting any kind of work done externally. You want to know how long things take? We're doing everything on camera. 
We are yep. not working on it on our off time. It is, there's no cooking show. Here, let me pull the buns out of the oven. Right. Nothing like that. But after the last show, I got contacted by a fellow who is a digital sculptor and is currently working on season two of The Witcher. And he sent me uh, a digital bust that he had done of, of Henry in The Witcher costume, uh, all pre-sliced to be printed out on my, my Photon 3D printer, and said that it is exclusive for you and me because it is a... Um, it's something that only cast and crew has. It's not mm. something that I can share. So I'm sorry, everyone. I, I specifically was told by the artist that I'm not allowed to share it, but I can print it out and show you guys. So that's gonna happen. If I can get it printed, and I don't know if I can. I mean, I got time, but I don't know if I wanna haul the printer out and fight with it. I need to get editing done. So it may not be this week, but- it Might be the next week. But probably next week. We will have those busts printed out and be able to show you that this is some of the awesome swag that, that, that happens when, when you're making costumes and wanna share it with other people. Uh, that's what happens you know, for, for us, because we're doing this YouTube things. But honestly, that happens in real life as well. There's been times like um, I've, I've gone out to other parties and other places wearing some crazy astronaut thing that I made up, and people hand me stuff just because they thought the costume was really awesome. So. Not that getting bribed is a reason to get into costumes, but it is really rewarding to, to have that happen to you personally. So I, be creative. Be, figure out a way. I, I can't stress how much fun it is, at least for us, to make costumes, to, to, to be goofy, to, to make these characters, and then to wear them and, and to go out. And it seems like it would be hard to do, but trust me, it's not. Once you get this costume on, you are someone else. Even to yourself, I personally don't really like dancing because I don't think I've got coordination. But when I'm wearing like a giant Muppet costume, so all, all I got to do is this type of thing and everything bounces and moves, totally happy to be out in the dance floor. I work at a costume shop, used to work at a costume shop. Jeez, this is the first Halloween. I have not been there. Anyways. Wow, yeah. Yeah, because decades no longer exist. Right. It's been sold. But... Um, I, where was I going? We're talking about costumes. We're talking about costumes. Okay. So I've seen so many people coming through the door. You know, I have to go to the stupid party and it's dress up and they just right. are not excited. But when we get them in the costume and then we get them in the accessories and they start getting into the theme of the party, you just see people go from night and day. It is... They thaw out. <laughs> I don't know. You, it's like a different side of them, like the party animal. Inside comes out when you really get into costumes, and you have people coming and returning those costumes going, oh my gosh, I had so much fun at this costume party. I can't wait till the next one. And then all of a sudden we have these regulars who are just like, they're the dress-up people, where they're like coming in going, I have to wear a stupid costume. Right. So I saw that happen all the time of just people having changes of hearts. Once they, once you get them in, sometimes you just be like, get in the dressing room, put the stupid thing on, and then they put it on and they go, well, well, now I, this, this is kind of cool. This is really nice. Do I get a sword? <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. Fine. Yes. Guys like boots and swords. Yep. And I'm not going to say what ladies like. Yeah, I know. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Wow. We are five minutes over. Right. Star Wars is pointing out, uh. I hit 3 a.m., which 24 hours ago was 4 a.m. I'm pretty sure it's way past his bedtime. It's almost time for me to wake up for work. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Ding. It's 1 a.m. in California again. Hey. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this. I did. did I you? did. I did too. A lot. Yeah, for sure. And I hope you guys oh, enjoyed yeah, sure. seeing the tour of the studio. We'll, we'll try and do that again. I'm not going to guarantee it's going to happen this Monday, but uh, there'll come a time when we will do a, a walk around tour or, or or show other elements of the shop uh, again. Or when the room's updated. When the room gets updated, yeah, which is slow going, but it happens. So if you guys are tired as hell, ready to yeah. go to bed, had a happy Halloween, I want to see the pictures. Right. Got lots of pictures. Starius is still sending us duck butt gifts. I'm <laughs> glad you guys appreciate because that... It is totally a duck butt. It's a duck butt because you, with a double-breasted jacket and yellow leggings, you are the Howard dark the duck. Wing duck. You're dark, dark wing duck. Just saying. I love costumes. Okay. Ooh, it's only 10 a.m. over there. Where are you? Okay. So. 10 a.m. Oh, UK. Okay.
maybe. The, well, I guess the only solution for all these costumes is to have more Halloweens. Okay, I'm good for that. Summerween? Summerween! <laughs> Decemberween. Decemberween. Well, I don't know. I ended up making a career out of this, so there's that. Exactly. I'm, I'm still trying to do that. Right. <laughs> right. I don't know. So. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to figure out how to say goodbye, and, and, and trust me, I'm this awkward in real life. This isn't a persona. I, I have no idea how to say goodbye in real life either. It's, it's better just to kick me out the door. But um, it's been a lot of fun. The, the party's been a lot of fun. Thank you guys so much for sticking it out if you're still here. Super thank you to all the Super Chat contributors. That's, that's amazing and, and above oh and gosh. beyond. And thank you for that. Uh, Super Chat will stick around. In fact, I'll probably be uh, splitting Super Chat with Felicia because she's hanging out here with me all night. So thank you all for that. And yeah, I don't know what else to tell you guys. Happy Halloween. And we'll see you again in 36 hours. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, we're going to be working on the clamshell. We're getting the clamshell some more. Do you, do you get the vinyl we need for the top? No, I haven't. I haven't gone shopping yet. I just got off of, you know, this Right, yeah, again. of course. You know, and I'm up here doing this instead of, you know, working on that. I right. told you, we're not working on that thing at all at outside all. of the... Well, we only have to get 15 minutes work to work on it done in order to maintain our current, like, record. <laughs> <laughs> no, no it'd be nice to get a little more net done. Honestly, on it, I feel like we've been working on it, but it takes time to knit. More knitting the chainmail. Oh, you God, guys. the first episode was nothing but knitting chainmail, right? And then we're attacked. It, it's just, it takes time to do all the nitty gritty, just work. And that's what happens with a lot of crafting, it's just a lot of nitty busy work. work. Yep. A lot of busy work, but. I hope you guys have fun watching us do it yeah. and seeing the process without it being filtered. Yep. Uh, for those of you who are on my Patreon, and for those of you who are not, the uh, Discord side side well is going to be a permanent feature. That is a permanent um, uh, Patreon reward for for some of the different levels. You get different uh, abilities to do different things within within the chat. Like Starius is able to post all these gifts because of the the level that he's at. Um, so that's always going to be there for all the live streams, as well as in general. This morning when we first got it up and running, I was distracted with Discord for nearly an hour just talking to these guys. Um, so it was great fun. Yeah. I was on there, but I was just trying to figure out how to even... I was reading the user guide. Right. <laughs> so if you guys saw me and I didn't respond, it's because I didn't know what I was doing yet. Still don't. And for those of you who aren't on, 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 on Patreon or Discord, that's okay. I'm not trying to tell you have to. The, the chat window is open on the, on the left over here, and Felicia's been trying to keep an eye on that as much as she can, because uh, there's quite a bit of activity going on. So we are trying to pay attention, and, and we enjoy answering questions. So please fire off the questions, and, and we'll do our best to get around to all of them. But for the 10th minute uh, in a row now, <laughs> thank you guys so much for spending this evening with us, <laughs> and we'll see you again in 36 hours. Bye-bye. 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 Are they gone yet? Are they gone yet? She yes. are killing me. <laughs> <laughs> I always love that in Toy oh, Story, that's, too. Yeah, that's great. Alrighty. Now, maybe, maybe, maybe you've got the button this time? I think I've got the button.